stuff. Like I used to do a yeah. similar thing when I was a child mm -hmm. at the lunch table. We'd get some kids who were mentals or a couple of them might have been mentals and a couple of kids that were well, you know, and we'd get well, there and sit well, them to make them drink milk and then tell <laughs> jokes and do stuff and to, tell one of them just blew milk out of their face, <laughs> you know? And if you get some straight up just a couple mentals, boy, some straight up sawed off humans, you get them to... Dude, you get them to first straight up blow leche out their dome, dude. That's America right there. You know what I'm saying? And that's when I knew I was like, oh, I got some kind of a gift here. You know? I almost blew the throat out of this one boy. Almost threw the this Jesus. almost blew, blew the throat out of this this one boy named Tot T O T with his name. <laughs> kind of a bad name too to be mentally challenged. But also easy for him to spell. And, I'm not joking, that's what his father said. And, um, easy for him to spell backward and forward. Same name, Todd. So, that's true, man. Was this guy's real, his name was Todd? Yeah, Why are you so laughing at him? It's just a funny sounding name, that's all. I'm yeah, sorry. Yeah, you're right. Like, you know, everybody is naked, you know, and so, like, life is naked. This is just an, you know, it's almost like an art. Like, this is how people, you know, it's like this is when they're old and this is when they're young and these guys are, you know, watching TV or whatever, you know, I thought. So I sent it to everybody I knew. I was like, guys, this is so silly. And, dude, I remember, like, two years later running into an ex-girlfriend, and she goes, well, what have you been up to with your life, right? She goes, yeah, well, nobody will forget that time that you sent that picture of two old men and a naked kid to everybody. Virgin power is so strong. Bro. Is I it? Wild. Virgin? Oh, dude. That's crazy. Oh, a, uh, somebody parked a Volkswagen rabbit on this guy's leg one time outside of our schoolhouse, and I saw a virgin fucking lift it right off his leg. Wild. Yo, and this was in fucking, who knows when it was. Every scene is from, like, the movie Powder. Every scene. That's amazing. <laughs> what are you talking about? Dude? Every scene you of your life. Like stories like that? I've never seen a virgin pick up a car. Yeah. They pick up AK-47s now. That's the problem. Virgins now are picking up AR-15s. Hopefully they start picking up cars again. That would be nice. They need to start That'd passing out some pussy then, bro. I agree with you. Because they're shutting down all the pussy, bro. That's who's doing it. did a bunch of mushrooms, and we didn't, uh, I don't know. We weren't really in the race or anything. But at one point, we took over a, a table. Somebody had a table where they had all the cups of water. And we took it over right in the middle, and I'm just just flying on mushrooms at this point, dude. I'm you know, I'm looking, you know, the Lord's looking for me, you know, and I'm looking for him, you yeah, know. Yeah. We're gonna meet up that afternoon, but uh, and people were running by in this race, you know, it's tens of thousands of people in this race, and when they get close, someone would would try to get the water, and we'd be like, no, it's for Asian people only. <laughs> So you had so many people, and they're running. They have to keep going. There's t there's a huge flow of people. They can't argue or discuss right, it. Right, right. And you'd be like, uh, oh, it's Asians only. And they're like, eh, 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 eh. and they just keep on like, passing out from dehydration yeah, yeah. a quarter mile down the road. <laughs> All these Irish people Wild stacking up. up at the curb at the next turn, just boom, yeah. boom. And all the Asian people were so happy. Super hydrated. Oh. So, so then I just got into stand-up, and I always like making people laugh. Like I used to do a yeah. similar thing when I was a child. At the lunch table, we'd get some kids who were mentals or a couple of them might have been mentals and a couple kids that were well you know we get there and sit them to, and if you get some straight up just a couple mentals boy some straight up sawed off humans you get them to, dude you get them to for straight up blow leche out their dome dude that's america right there you know what i'm saying and that's when i knew i was like oh i got some kind of a gift here you know i almost blew the throat out of this one boy Almost threw the this Jesus. almost blew, blew the throat out of this this one boy named Tot T O T with his name. <laughs> kind of a bad name too to be mentally challenged, but also easy for him to spell. And I'm not joking. That's what his father said. And um, easy for him to spell backward and forward. Same name, Tot. So that's true, man. Was this guy's real? His name was Tot. Yeah, <laughs> Why are you so laughing at him? Bro, one time I was with this girl and uh, I was so drunk, bro. She was driving us and I had to puke so bad and I just took my hat off my head, filled it, just vomited right into it, right? Just threw it right out the window, just kept talking to her like nothing had happened. Bro. 
Those fucking milk holsters. Bro, I could smell the milk. I could smell the children. I could smell all the years of my buddy growing up. <laughs> what the fuck, bro? bro? I could smell it all, dude. <laughs> wow. And it would go straight <laughs> into my head. Creepy. And that dude, I would jerk when I was when I was young, when I'd masturbate, I'd pass out. The time I knew I had a neighbor at one of my old places and he and he and he 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 uh had husbands or men. He you know, preferred the pleasure of men. And they used to get up there, and sometimes, dude, I'd be laying in bed at night listening to these men make love kind of in the distance. And, uh, and damn, sometimes it was, you know, it didn't make me erect or anything like that, but it was, it was probably the most I ever even knew my neighbors, really, in a weird way. You know, probably the closest that I got to knowing any of my neighbors was sometimes listening to this man who used to make soap. He also made soap. He's a soap, uh, soapsman, or a sudsman, I don't even know. I could look it up on my internet's having trouble. Um, I would, you know, and I would listen to him, and, and he had a couple of different partners, I think. But that's his shit, dude. That's his life. Fucking nah, good. I mean, you're beautiful, man. Yeah, you're a good guy. I appreciate guy. it, man. You seem like a really good guy, and I'm happy that you found a lady that... Yeah. I mean, I just remember seeing you guys laugh and just, like, being, like, goofy and just seem like, I was like, man, these two kids are... Hope they don't have a child, you know, because this child's going to be mentally handicapped. <laughs> But I also remember, because where I'm from, if you see two mentals hugging, you call the cops on them. And that was a rule when I was young, and that's true, dude. That's true. If you see two mentals hugging, you call the cops immediately because once two mentals don't make a non-mental. You know, rarely do they. And it's a risk, and it's a it's high risk, low reward. That's what they call that. You don't think I have talent? Well, um, let's see if I do. You know? Right. Um, yeah. So, so then I just got into stand-up, and I always like making people laugh. Like, I used to do a yeah. similar thing when I was a child. At the lunch table, we'd get some kids who were mentals, or a couple of them might have been mentals, and a couple of kids that were well, you know? And we'd get there and sit them to make them drink milk, and then tell <laughs> jokes and do stuff until one of them just blew milk out of their face. <laughs> you know? And if you get some straight up, just a couple minnows, boy, some straight up sawed off humans, you get them to, dude, you get them to for straight up blow leche out their dome, dude. That's America right there. You know what I'm saying? It'll cure Down Syndrome, bro. I beat it. How <laughs> you beat it? Well, there's a lot of rumors in my town that I beat Down Syndrome. <laughs> really? Yeah. Well, that's inspiring, man. That's how I felt when I heard them, because I didn't start them. I really feel like I grew up in the stray animal belt of Louisiana, and they don't really have this anymore because everybody has pets now. But they had a long time where there was just, I felt like thousands of strays running around. Like Joey Diaz, he got bit by animals. I got jumped by a bunch of cats on my birthday once. Dude, I'm not even joking, dude. And one of them, I swear to God, some of them got me on the ground, and one of them came off a fucking rooftop from next door. I swear to God, I still remember a couple of them were getting me and looking back and seeing one come from something in the air. And uh, and they had tons of stray animals where I was from. You couldn't, you had to infuse that in everything you did, wherever you went, or if you were gonna bike or play ball. I got jumped by a bunch of cats. cats. And that'll make you feel like a little bitch too. I mean, first of all, your dad's dying, and now there's cats jumping you. Oh. It's just, you know, I grew up around some fucking real crazy poor white people. You know, the dude, no arm. They had a dude in our town, no arms. He used to fucking fight everybody. You know that dude, you know what I'm saying? He'd get you in that lurch, he would catch you with his between his chin and his chest. He would fucking snack you like a snake. We were talking about this dude. His boy I, Gert was his name. I and he would just get you like that, bro. He and he'd choke no, you down. He had no arms. No arms at all. And he'd fight anybody, dude. And he would choke you, he would So if you went to punch him, how would he block? Oh bro. He'd spin out of it. He'd spin, he'd duck, he'd dodge. The dude had, I mean, he just... And would he catch your hand with his neck? Huh? Would he catch your Oh, hand? he would just lurch at you. And, bro, the thing is, here was the... Oh, you know what? If he hits you with that shoulder, you're going down. Uh, yeah, part of it, the big move yeah. was that choke. He would get, he would catch you like this. Where would he catch you? Your hand? In your neck. He would catch you neck to neck. <laughs> That's fucking crazy. Oh, uh, once he got you neck to neck... Gert you, but this whole family, the whole family was fucking you could choke you out. psychos, bro. Brother had sharpened half of his teeth on one side of his mouth, dude. These people would fuck you up. 
one of the kids was in a wheelchair or just they never taught him to walk I think I don't even think he was crippled they just never taught him to walk and so the other brother would carry him on his back everywhere like a backpack dude you know they had a, the first wigger I ever met was from our town bro I think the first wig ever man this kid named Brian St. Pierre bro and they put him in class he was class. a white dude that was trying to be black yeah he was a white dude they where put did him, he move from Nowhere, bro. He fucking just, you know, he was raised like, kind of like, you know, he was like Mowgli, you know, like he was just fucking spent a little bit of time on the other side of town, you know. And his brothers really got a hold of him. And, uh, and he was cool, though. He was a cool dude, man. Mowgli. He was, bro. He was like a Mowgli, you know. My whole body just shook. I thought it was an earthquake. Bro. <laughs> he was like a damn. Oh, That's an inner it. yoga, bro. That's an inner yoga. But look, man. They put him in the fucking mentally handicapped class, bro, because they'd never seen it before. They'd never seen it before. They put him in class with kids with Down syndrome, with kids with in wheelchairs. They put him... What, just a dude who had like a... Couldn't he just be like, hey guys, this is the way I, I want to talk. I don't even know what the fuck you're saying, Lee, right now. You sound like them right now. They'll probably put you in that class right now. Yeah, oh, Lee would be in, dude. Yeah, I don't even know what you're saying. You like that fucking? You like that? They put the wigger in in the in the special class. That's what you sounded. That's what that dude sounded like. I wanted a dollar today. Leave me that one. You know, like cousin it. Shit, I'm over here. You know. Before we started, Lee kept thinking he was hearing a buzz and it's a oh, mic. Oh my god, people, we were started late. Because Lee was looking around the room like... And now he's fuck? making a buzz in the mic. Listen to him, he's the walking buzz over here. Oh. That's an old-fashioned jerking off when you used to let your balls hit your hand. <laughs> that's a straight up... That's a Confederate soldier jerking off. That's the... Old-fashioned you know, jerking off. The new thing is just shaft only. Nobody's fucking with their balls anymore, <laughs> you know? Dude, when I was growing up, we couldn't even get porn. We had to get this dude, Nick, on Friday would draw us a picture of some pussy, you know? So we had props for the weekend. Four dollars to this dude, Nick. Four dollars for drawings? Bro, you'd pay eight. <laughs> and he had a nice fucking thing, bro. And you would fold that Ugh. thing up, bro. You could feel it heating in your butt pocket the whole way on the bus. Sometimes you'd even was fucking... that good? The pictures are that oh, good? he was so you good. You jerk off this guy's drawings? Oh, everybody would. He must have made probably sixty dollars on a Friday, <laughs> and this was in 1995. You know, that was sixty dollars, like 160 today. Oh yeah, think about that. Yeah, I'm thinking about it. Yeah, dude, and we come back on Monday, and people would have like these fucking busted ass looking all sketches, <laughs> rain on them. People was like, oh, this one got rain on it. Like, bro, <laughs> that that's some shit. Yeah, that rain has your fucking kids in it. <laughs> You're lying about that. What percentage do you think of the internet is dedicated to porn? All internet traffic. Everything. But, but <laughs> I remember I got on a school bus one day, and the man didn't even take us to school. He just drove us around. <laughs> and, uh... Fuck off! Swear to God. And then just drove us back home eventually. What's wrong with him? He didn't say anything either. Probably drunk. And when at a certain <laughs> point, he you don't ask. Shot. Where do you get all those hamsters from? That's it. Well, they breed them in our town. I used to work for this group. They used to sell tattooed hamsters and guinea pigs after, uh... They tattoo them? Yeah, they used to brand them with concerts and raves. They would say it's tattooed just to make people not be as sad about it. But it was a brand, bro. A brand, bro. A what? But like a heat name, bro. For what? Like what did it say? Oh, uh, 311, Green Day, anything like a different band that would come to town. <laughs> Toadies. <laughs> swear to God, up. bro. Toadies, Acid Bath. Uh, who else? Uh, rave. Whatever, bro. We used to truck these hounds into the city and fucking <laughs> bend them, bro. <laughs> we did, man. Because there wasn't much, there wasn't much work in our town, dude. You know, you had to get what you could get, and they had a man that bred hamsters, and uh, and they had to do the, the tattoos, and they fucking met up, and that was a merger. That's big business, you know. And they started uh, a merger. They started doing it. Man, <laughs> I got me some three hundred mouse in my house and shit. And some other guys like, you know what, man? I'm a pretty good tattoo artist. <laughs> That's Louisiana. Baby. And that's it. A merger is formed. <laughs> that means someone listening to this right now has had a hamster with like a band label on him. Like, Who the fuck it? buys a hamster? Listen, if I went to a concert, do you think I'm bringing a hamster home with fuck fucking yeah. ACDC? No, I'm not. 
No, I'm no, not. I'm going to be <laughs> fucked up the whole night with this hamster in my but pocket. When you leave, when you leave, Coco, when you leave the place, that's when we get you, bro. You get it, there. People are leaving. They're on ecstasy pills. They're on Molly. You leave. You get that fucking hands, you get that warm little piece of God in their hands, they buy it every time. You got Chinese eyes right now, bro. Dude, people used to always call me little China boy when I was in, uh, <laughs> uh when, in, like in the summertime when I was at summer camp because they had like, remember, um, it's not Dan or what is it, that comes off of nature, you know what I'm talking about? Pollen. Pollen. So, yeah, they have it everywhere. And anyway, you go outside. <laughs> They do, dude. All in, bro? Yeah. <laughs> I know. This guy, yeah. He's learning every day, bro. <laughs> I know. Yeah. He don't know much. He doesn't believe us, bro. Believe yeah, like I said, it was a joke. You know, yeah. There's pollen out there, bro. They have pollen everywhere, dude. They have pollen looking at you right now, bro, from point blank range. Think about that. That's how powerful oh, it is. Shit. It can be milling around in front of you at point blank range. Yeah, man. And it would get in my eyes, and I couldn't open my eyes at all. For sometimes even almost a month, like I could barely get my eyes open a little bitty bit. So they would call you China Boy? Yeah. <laughs> They would call me China boy. Well, it's, you know what? You don't. Do you have eyelids? Yeah. Hang baby, on, baby, close baby. your eyes. Two eyelids. You do. You oh, have double eyelids. Wow, well, it looks like say, I don't. Yeah, when you do that, it looks like you don't. You oh, could be yeah. Asian. Well, the reason why is you have chromatic. He forehead. has, yeah, like a his. It's chromatic, bro. It's chromatic. Yeah, it's like riding Real on man. chrome, baby. You feel yeah, me? That's like, what I'm saying, <laughs> dog. Yeah. I don't know if that's shit, a good thing, man. bro. It's like I meant to say you're like you're mentally. <laughs> yeah, a little bit. Oh. Dude, you ate a dog poop, remember? <laughs> what? I ate dog poop? Yeah, yeah only, but I you only had one piece. <laughs> but still, man. <laughs> <laughs> I never did that. Dude. I know. You never tried poo. I've never had any. Dude, we used to get high when we were kids, and we'd go outside and get high, and then I'd come back in early into my buddy's house, and I would tell his dad, and I would be like, oh, Mr. Mike, man, uh... Cause his dad was like had a lot of like anti-gay energy you know really yeah and he would just say stuff all the you know like years just stay stuff you know just like ignorant shit you yeah, know pass off you uh, no, i didn't see anything like that <laughs> <laughs> but i'd go i'd come in after we've been out there smoking weed i'd come in and i'd be like mr mike man they were being i don't know richard was over and people were just being kind of Touchy yeah, it's just real strange out you there. You beat him? Did you beat him? Yeah, bro. So then, dude, <laughs> my friends Adam would come back inside, man, and his dad would be like, "What the fuck have you boys been doing out there? You've been queer." <laughs> and queering as a verb is very funny. Oh, you've been queering around, boys. <laughs> And he was just, yeah, I mean, just <laughs> lighting into it, dude. And I would be <sighs> dying <laughs> with laughter. And they were so high, they didn't know how to explain that they hadn't been, you know, oh, queer. They were so high and you set oh. them up. <laughs> Do you feel bad about that? I feel great about it. <laughs> that shit was some of the fun. I loved creating an ambiance in advance, man. Oh, so and, you knew it was coming. And they had a gas leak over at that house, too, man. And we'd go over there, bro. We'd sleep from fucking Friday night to Sunday morning, bro. For real? Yeah. <laughs> Dude, and cocaine. Oh, go back to that vest story, man. So well, here's what happened. <laughs> so I, you know, I would get, I would do some cocaine at the house and put on these different vests. How many did you buy again? I don't know. I spent too much on them, bro. <laughs> I would probably say <laughs> the priciest one I had was probably about 210 Nice. Damn. Yeah. And so I would get fucked up and put these vests on and put on sunglasses. And not no like Buffalo Bill shit, but at least partying by myself, you mm -hmm. know. And one time I was making a smoothie, you know, because I, you know, I have, I got like a new, I don't know what kind of blender it is, but it was pretty nice. And I was making like a nice smoothie and I'm fucking coked up. I'm partying, you know, mm. I'm living high on the hog. Got these two vests on maybe, right? And I thought, I, <laughs> dude, I thought I heard something outside, right? Which is kind of weird to even think of when you have a blender going, right? So I leave out of my apartment to go in the hallway, lock myself out with the blender going. <laughs> 2 30 in the morning, coked up out of my brain, right? Now I have to go to my landlord, dude, uh, who lives right down the hall oh no. and tell him like, hey man. 2 30 in the morning, I'm, I got locked out. Locked and the blender's out on, the blender's son. Going. Oh my God, he must've hated you. Oh, the blender shorts out and the smoke happens the fire uh, <sighs> alarm starts going off in the building right as I'm at his door knocking, right? Oh my God. So now he's pissed and he's like, what's going on? And I didn't know what to say. I told him that I was throwing a late Christmas party, dude. 
It was fucking <laughs> into January. How old were you at the time? Huh? Oh, this is two and a half years ago. So I was 35. <laughs> I was 35. <laughs> Bro. So he so, comes back to my apartment, right? He's fucking uh, pissed. He unlocks the door. There's nobody in there. <laughs> Oh my god. Like man, but that's it. It was fun. Oh my god. That was fun. How long did you live there for? I still live there. Whoa. Yeah, we passed I mean, we kind of <laughs> You know, like I've caught him doing some things. So I think I, mean, I think we're all even. <laughs> oh, oh. How long have you been sober for? Uh, two year in two weeks it'll be two years. What was the big thing where you like? I gotta get my shit together. You know, I was going on Opian Gym when Opian Gym Norton had a radio show at Sirius, and it was actually on. Uh, it's on Ari's that show that he had. This is not happening. Um, and I ended up uh, doing coke all night driving a taxi. I was in a taxi. The driver, this dude Luigi, um, got me an escort. I didn't want to escort. We're doing cocaine in like Harlem or something, North Harlem. You and the cab driver are doing coke. And I just had, I was taking a cab from a party to my hotel. And so we end up off on this other excursion. Next thing you know, I'm driving the taxi. He's in the back with the hooker. It's 5.30 in the morning. And I got to be on the radio station at, you know, 6.30 or something. So I get to the radio and I can't even talk. And, uh, and Daryl Strawberry's the other guest, right? Who's the baseball player who also had drug problem, but he's like 13 years sober. And so it was this weird moment where like, I thought I was kind of cool, but then here's a man who like, I'd always in my head, maybe somewhere thought, oh, that guy's like a coke head. But right. then here he is eloquent, put together, successful. And here I am, I can't even talk. And I'm with two men that I admire, um, you know, Opie and Jim Norton, just to be honored to be on the show, you know? And so I was like, this is, I'm, I'm not making choices like there's some there's some unevenness here, you know. And so what did you do after that? Join a 12-step program? Join a 12-step program, yeah. And then, so yeah, so I've been in that then. Since then, it's helped me out, you know. Dude, one time we were doing schizophrenic breaks. We did some LSD, right? We were children, right? And so we went to the um, Waffle House because it was open, you know. Mm -hmm. Like when you were on drugs and you were a kid, you basically like that's the downside of having any place that stays open all night. It's like right. people are gonna come there. They're all on know? drugs. No yeah, one's sober at Waffle yeah, House, yeah, right? <laughs> so we get there, dude, and uh, and we're in there, and my buddy starts laughing so hard, he's like uh, kind of convulsing a little bit. My buddy Scott and the waiter was a uh, black gentleman and a gay guy. We never seen a uh, gay black dude, right? So anyway, he starts doing the Heimlich maneuver on my buddy, right? And he wasn't choking. He was just losing his shit because he was so fucking geeked up on LSD, right? <laughs> so, bro. So this dude's doing a Heimlich and he's not even dude, choking? He's not even fucking choking. Did you tell him he wasn't choking? I couldn't speak. I was laughing <laughs> so fucking hard. <laughs> it was <laughs> unreal, <dude. sighs> <laughs> oh. How did he? Did he figure out that your buddy was? <laughs> I think I disappeared and just woke up in the sixth grade. <laughs> but man, I just we laughed so fucking hard. Man. This guy's trying to give you a Heimlich. Oh my god! It was so much fun doing drugs when you didn't know what was gonna happen. Mm. It yeah. was scary, but it was exciting. Jamie, did you put another one of these down? Because I threw the other one. It was a... I asked <clears throat> to find another one out there, and apparently that has some power in it. But I don't know. Check it's, it. not, it's not new, I know that. Give it away. Do you have a beverage on this game that I can have? What would you like? Another one? Throw that away too, then. Maybe I want something that's going to fucking teach me something. Oh, that's the one. Mm. That's the one. There's um, coffee on the table if you want some coffee. Uh, there you is. want something oh, okay. else? You want a kill cliff? I just want something, yeah. You want a kill cliff? Yeah. Can we get a couple of kills, man? Yeah, oh, man. Oh. Mm. Um, dude, Ugh. it was so cool to see Ron White and talk to him oh, last night. Oh, man. He's the best. Bro, I walk in. Yeah, he's in there. Tom Segura's in there. Put a little bit. I so felt like I'm going to have one more. One more. Oh, God. It's, you know I'm an addict because I know I look forward to this. Gosh. I look forward to it, too. Yeah. Do I? I mean, a little bit. 
I'm a functional addict or something. Yeah. Which, if you're an addict, dude, you've redesigned it because you're doing good at it. <laughs> yeah, that's I feel problem. like it can be done. <laughs> there you go. That's a zero. <laughs> I feel like there's certain addictions that can be managed. Yeah. You've had one of these, right? Yeah, they're great. Yeah, this is my own. Oh, yeah, you got your own, and so does Israel Adesanya, right? This is Flaming right? Joe. Yeah, it, Israel Adesanya has a Kiwi one. Yeah. It's nice. I talked Cook to this guy one time on the phone. He's a really nice guy. Oh, he's the best. John's the best. And we got a, a, a new one coming out with a, a compilation, a, a collaboration with me and uh, Cam Haynes. It's a spicy, yeah. spicy cherry called Elf Blood. Ooh, nice, boy. It's good, dude. It's Keep good. hammering, dude. We, we went through, like... I had to go through like seven or eight versions to get to this. Mm -hmm. This is perfect, which I think is like the perfect flavor. This one is a um, pineapple, uh, like a spicy pineapple. Mm -hmm. It's like pineapple with a little bit of jalapeno. Jalapeno in there. This is a very addictive drink. Yeah, I like having me a little something. I didn't have any caffeine all day today because I wanted to wait till I had some in here. Mm. You know? You manage that? Yep, I was like, I'm waiting until I get in there. It's going to be exciting. Yeah. I'm going to have it when I get in there. What's the most time you've ever spent off a of cabin? 30, I would say 30 days. I had uh, Michael Pollan on, and he was explaining he took, I think he took like three months. Is that what he said? Something like that? Three months off of caffeine, and he said when he had it, he was like, it was like a psychedelic experience. Wow. It's like it's so different when your body's not accustomed to caffeine, and you have it. It's like you have this insane feeling of bliss. It's like it's really wild. Mm. Yeah. Well, we were doing that. Uh, remember, I used to do those vapes. Remember? Mm-hmm. And right I now, I quit those. Oh, me too. Too addictive. And I didn't like it. Yeah. And it made me tired. Like I was tired. Oh, I'd have a couple hits, yeah, and you start to shut like down this, a little. Like, uh, yeah. But the first hit is magical. Oh. The first hit, I take a big puff, and it'd be like, um, like everything just washes over you, feel so relaxed. Yeah. It's brain cells dying. Mm. <laughs> it's like, it's like again, it's getting stupider where everything's gonna be okay. Because <laughs> I feel like the more smart you are, the more you take into account all the possibilities and all the variables and all things that can go wrong. But one hit of that vape and you're like this. <sighs> yeah. Oh yeah. But then I was always chasing that dragon. Yep. And then later on the night, I noticed I'd be hitting it and nothing would happen. I'd be like, what? Am, what am I doing here? Yeah, I couldn't. I think we did Esco bars or whatever. Mm -hmm. Oh, and then one time I went into a place and the lady's like, this is the strongest one they got. This yeah. bitch is the strongest. She's like, every hit is like smoking five cigarettes. That's what she would say, dude. Like, and then she would fucking hit it. And no joke, her hair would curl, dude. <laughs> Smoke's coming out of her ears. <laughs> yeah, like, <laughs> this bitch like hitting five cigarettes. And <laughs> he fucking hit that bitch. Yeah, I haven't fucked with the vapes in quite a while, but uh, I have friends that still hit them all the time. And you see, like, oh, I see that. I see that little thing that's in your body. I'm about six days off right now, and I'm really battling, yeah. Oh, you're battling still. Yeah, I don't want to see somebody with one. That's the tough mm, moment for me. Yeah, you just want to grab it. Give me a hit of that. Yeah. So last time, I didn't see anybody with one. I took a couple of puffs off a cigarette, though. I hadn't had that in a few years. That was fun. What made you uh, quit the vape? I didn't. It keeps me up. Mm. It keeps me just rattling, you know? Like, you ever, think your, you ever think your car is still going and you push it and it's off? Right. Like that. Mm. Yeah, you're just up. Yeah, my thing's still going. Into the lake. And you're up. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I'm good. fucking up, dude. It's also like, it can't be good for you. All that oil, you, you, that mist, and you would like, sometimes you feel it in your throat. Yeah. Your throat would get all dry and fucked up irritated from all the oil like, what is in there like what's a uh, google escobars like what are the ingredients like what's the, what's the oil they use i mean them that bitches are mist. good though now if oh, you're yeah. running across the border if you are doing long di like if you are long distance cycling or something i think have one on you <laughs> <laughs> propene glycol a vegetable glycerin natural and artificial flavors and nicotine mm -hmm. all right but what is that? Is that bad for you? That's not bad for you. Is the additive safe? It's a synthetic food additive that belongs to the same chemical group as alcohol. It's colorless, odorless, slightly syrupy. It's generally recognized as safe by the U.S. Food and Drug Administration. Yeah. Yeah. I don't believe those people, though. Mm -hmm. FDA, they're all in codes. FDA considers the average daily uh, dietary intake of uh, 23 milligrams per kilogram of body weight to be safe for persons 2 to 65 years of age. 
Maybe. But what about vaping it? Google vaping. Is vaping propane? That even was from 2008. Oh, vaping didn't exist then? 2008. You remember people doing it back then? I don't think so. I I remember they had those little brick vapes. I used to huff gas and stuff. But that was different. You're like a tall, in-shape, good-looking dude. I'd look at you, and I think there's nothing wrong in his life at all. Like, uh, there's no way he's self-conscious about anything. Well, that's what we're both wrong, man. I look at you, and I think this guy's fucking what environment, got it all. What you environment know? do you feel comfortable in? Just a more real environment, a more just calm, uh, uh, just a, uh, an 10 environment. Ten people, 50 people, 100 people. Yeah, as long as, yeah, I can, I can feel okay in 10, 50. When it gets to, to be a little more than that, it's sometimes it's just too much. But when the music's loud and I can't communicate with people, then that's where I start to feel uncomfortable. That's my end. That's my fault. But I end. kept going back. I kept thinking there was something wrong with me, that the environment was okay. But it wasn't, man. And that's what happened that night. I went to this club, and uh, they had a party for my friend's fashion line. And then I got in this taxi after this girl gets in with me I left early because I was going to be on Opie and Jim Norton this when Opie and Jim were still together and uh, this beautiful girl gets in the taxi with me this Asian girl and she just started talking about the night she said that she had fun at the party but that her boyfriend wasn't in town then she goes her boyfriend's never in town then she's like what happens in taxis stays in taxis right that's what she said so I'm thinking fuck yeah you know like she wants me to make a move on her. So I make a move, shut me down. And I don't know if that's what made me feel weird after that or whatever, but the taxi dropped her off after that. And uh, and then it was just me and the driver, bro. And this dude spoke another language, you know, something fucking fancy. You know, something that could play soccer, you know? Like this dude, fucking, you know? Like this dude was betting on fucking foreign soccer games on his phone for sure, you know? And uh, he said, I thought he said drugs, dude. And I just said cocaine. That's what I said. And next thing you know, we're in North Harlem. Um, he bought some cocaine for us. He comes back in the car. We're doing cocaine. And then he's like, I got a gift for you. I got a gift, you know. And I thought it was going to be, you know, I grew up in like a troubled area. I thought it was going to be his dick, you know. Like, I'm, you know, that's what I was expecting anyway. And, uh, and then a hook him prostitute knocks on the door you know this lady gets in and I think it was a man honestly in hindsight she had these big sunglasses on kind of a man's face that was under the sunglasses you have cocktails in you at this point yeah had a couple tequilas dude and uh so now we're partying bro me him and me and the driver were first partying for about an hour dude I got so high I remember thinking where is the driver that's how fucking high I was (laughs) and he was sitting next to me doing cocaine yeah, at what point does this become not a taxi cab ride? Like, when does the meter get turned off? Like, this oh, is the meter's weird... going, bro. The meter's at about 270, bro. Uh, no. So he's got to fucking be positive because I'm paying for this experience, bro. <laughs> so then, dude, this hooker gets in. She had, she had kind of long hair, huge sunglasses covered about 60% of her face. And the 40% of her face you, you could see, to me, look like a man's face, right? Like, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that. I'm just... Like, if I were on a game show and it was like, guess 40% of this person's face, I would have guessed man first, right? You know what I'm saying? Like, look like a man's face, you know? Or it looked like a woman had just shaved recently. That's what it looked like, you know? So anyway, we're all, doing, we're all, we're all getting high together. And the hooker starts making advances towards me, bro. This sounds ridiculous, <laughs> And I got out of the car, man. I felt uncomfortable, dude. <laughs> so then, you feel like sliding. You don't understand. In my world, I'm thinking you're a Louisiana boy in fucking Harlem. No shit, do you feel out of place? <laughs> I feel out of place there, but no. I always felt comfortable in North Harlem. Yeah. Like that's. I know that neighborhood where you're at. You know what I'm saying? You're not in the Bronx yet, right? You're not in the yeah, Bronx. Yeah, I don't know yet. where we're at. Oh yeah, it doesn't matter. You <laughs> was it dark? It was a dark. Dark. Neighborhood. That's all that matters. Yeah, you ain't having a good time if you got in a dark neighborhood. Oh, I want a part of the night. I was raised in one. I know when I'm oh, back. Oh my god! You know, I know when I'm back. Bro. Now, what time is all this going down? It's about three thirty. All right. So, so what time? Like, so you walk out of the cab. Where are you now? You get in another cab? No, I'm in the street. Luigi comes out after me. That's the dude I was partying with the driver. And dude, you know what's crazy is he had even one of the lights on the taxi wouldn't go off, and he made like this little paper mache thing and put it over the light, bro. Like this dude was, 
I mean, I don't think he was a homosexual, but this dude was about the most romantic fucking cab driver I've ever spent time with, dude. And dude, it was more romantic in that taxi than it was at your fucking Airbnb, <laughs> bro. That's the saddest part. <laughs> so, dude, I get out. He comes out after me. <laughs> he made me give him 100 bucks, right? And I gave him the 100 because I was a little scared at this point. And I'm thinking he's going to pay the hooker, and she'll go. But then I look back over there a couple minutes later, a minute later. Um... And they're kissing on each other's necks. He's spending my hundred with this hooker, dude. He fucking just got this hundred out of me, bro. Wait, you're, so your taxi driver bullied you into buying him a hooker? <laughs> no, he owed him money anyway. Yeah. But right away he took the money. Luigi took the money and said, "Hold on, five minutes. Let me, get, let me yeah. go get twenty dollars worth off this hooker." He took that money and reinvested it in the neighborhood. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And look, I respect hookers, man. Like. You know, I've been through some tough nights, man. Not in fucking North Harlem. <laughs> yeah, right, but still, man. I don't give a fuck what you. Well, here's I respect women that are out there if they got to be out there selling their bodies. No, I, I don't have nothing right. against that. I know you don't. But in North Harlem, you ain't getting into nothing good. <laughs> yeah, you understand true. me? You keep saying North Harlem. Are there Harlem? Different parts I don't know. I don't know. Like East Harlem. Listen, okay? all I know it is was North. I used to go to Harlem to buy coke, and I'd see women out there, and dog. Let me tell you something. It's an illusion. Yeah. It's an illusion. First of all, four out of ten of them got bigger dicks than you. Oh, damn. Lady. Four? Four out of ten of those chicks. We don't like those In odds. those days, it was, you got to remember, up in Harlem in those days, the Bronx, it was open fucking corral. Then the 90s, the Russians came. Oh, yeah. And I never saw it, but I had friends tell me, you go to Queens, and there'd be six-foot Russian blondes with leopard miniskirts. That you give them three hundred just to eat the assholes. They were that hot, wow. like hot, banging, banging, like they took over. So all the other ones, the crack holes disappeared. Yeah, all that, you know. But in those days, even when I was, when I got in trouble with my buddy, you know, Dodger, and we were going over there, those hookers, yeah, those city rat oh, hookers in those days. You had a that that takes a certain nerve. Yeah, a lot of them work at the Popeyes during the daytime. No, they, they don't like, work. They they're at the clinic in really? the daytime, oh, getting blood transfusions. Dude, we used to have this lady Victoria, Miss Victoria, in our neighborhood, bro. You could pull up, bro. You could eat her ass for like forty bucks, right? She'd sit in your car window, dude. Just basically put her ass in your fucking car window, like a fucking to-go box, you know? You could if you had somebody driving, you could even have them drive the block. And she would just sit in there like a little side item, bro. But so this dude, get Luigi, I give him the 100. He gets back in the car. They're making out. I'm kind of pissed, dude. But I don't want to bring that negative energy back into the car. <laughs> right? So I deal with my feelings out in the street for a minute. Kind of process through that. Why don't you want to bring negative feelings back into the car? Just because. I'm already really extremely high, man. I'm under the influence of cocaine. Um, it's almost 4 a.m. Uh, and I don't know these people that well. And I still need to get home. And for some reason at this point, I feel like Luigi is responsible to get me home, right? So I get back in the front seat, right? And they're hooking up in the back, a little blowjob. Like, it's getting it's getting wild, you know? Uh, and I want to still do cocaine, you know? So I'm... But I don't want to interrupt him, dude. So I remember trying to quietly do cocaine in the front seat. Just like, okay. <laughs> like, like, like the softest little inhale you could do. Were bro. you watching like, him at any point? Oh, oh yeah, some, dude. I was definitely listening hard. You know? <laughs> Did you stink? I mean, uh, no, it's I like don't like cologne. Dude. Like, all you smell is like cologne. Like when you walk in the middle of them, all you smell is like fucking... Heavy duty perfume. Cover yeah, it up. I'm trying to remember. She smelled like violence to me in tattoos. She was a tough lady or man. I mean, I thought she was a man. The face looked like a man's face to me, but she had big sunglasses on. She could have been one of those taller Vietnamese people that kind of look black at night, you know? <laughs> uh, so we're in there, and uh, now I'm in the car, and I'm trying to quietly do cocaine, dude. Like, just like a fucking, just like a. Like just doing it in like an installments. Like I had a bump on layaway. Why do you, you know, have to get the fucking, light? They're back there fucking. Why can't you just? Because there's something wrong with me where I sacrifice other people. Like I just feel like I got to be considerate at all times. <laughs> I don't want to interrupt them, dude. I guess I don't know, man. I was fucked up, bro. So they're partying. At one point, I remember even turning my head back and just dumping cocaine quietly into the top of my nose <laughs> like this. <laughs> Just like, just as quiet as I could be. And a cop goes by, dude. Cop goes by. I get scared. 
I tell Luigi I'm scared, bro. He don't <laughs> he don't give a fuck, dude. This is when I realized like he didn't care about me as much as I cared about him, I guess. And he's like, "You drive, you drive." And that's when I got in the driver's seat, and I drove, man. I drove us. I drove us about a mile and a half, dude. I don't even know where I was, dude. And uh, and then I pulled over because a voice in my head, bro. First, a voice in my head is like, "Dude, at least you're." It was like, "You're out here, bro. You're high. You know, you're doing cocaine, uh, but at least you're making money. You know, <laughs> like I was working, like I was the cab driver." And that's when I'm like, dude, my brain's fucked up. Like, this ain't my cab. You know, I gotta pay for this. And then my brain was like, you don't have a commercial driver's license. And that's what got me to pull over, dude. That technicality that if a cop stopped me, that I wouldn't have one. And I pulled over. I got another taxi. Got back to my hotel room. Finished doing my cocaine. And I had to be on Opie and Jim Norton that morning. And it's 5.30 now, dude. I took three showers, bro, in ten minutes. Right? I have one question. Yeah. Did you pay Luigi, or did you just kind of get out and just get into another camp? <clears throat> we ended up in a little bit of an argument at the end. <laughs> <laughs> I left a hundred dollars on the car seat <laughs> and yelled "Adios" at him really loud. Bro, I don't even know if he spoke Spanish. Dude. <laughs> I'm just screaming "Adios" at him. <laughs> him and this fucking hooker who had the smallest tits I've ever seen. Bro, look like a man's chest. But uh. Then I go to Opie and Jim, dude, and the other guest for the day is Daryl Strawberry. And I could not even feel my face, dude. I couldn't even think. Uh, and that's when I was like, this is a bad look, you know? I couldn't even talk. They were asking me questions, dude, and I'm just, I couldn't even, like, the, I, I couldn't feel my face. I couldn't, all my thoughts was coming out of my neck. Like, I was running on, on neck thoughts, dude. I'm fucking thinking with my neck, bro. So I fucking sat there for three hours, bro. Just roasting. Now I know how you feel, kind of like. I just sat there just, just boiling in my own fucking drug-induced bullshit. And, uh, and then I fucking left, bro. And I, I'm halfway there. Halfway on the walk over there, I realized I had on fucking... Sweatpants with jeans over them, bro. <laughs> Horrible. That's like a catheter outfit. Like, you may, might be getting a catheter and you might have to stay overnight. <laughs> ah. There's a couple ways I, I wanted to go. I, want to go to, I wanted to talk about orgasmic meditation because I got into that for a while. Um, I wanted to talk about some other things, but we're going to have to do it at a different time because. Do you also, know how to do OM? I was in there. You got in and. I was in, yeah. I was in for like six months. Oh, dude, I was. I got bit by a fucking uh, Bichon up in. Topanga Canyon touching some lady yeah and it was all sanctioned this was sanctioned you know by the commission or whatever this was legal have you talked about this yet huh I don't know if we've talked about it um people keep asking you to elaborate I think it might be more interesting than some of our questions please elaborate Theo my boyfriend my ex-boyfriend was trained to do OM. Really? yeah and he did it to some strange woman and okay I I'll tell you what happened so hot I know it's not hot it's supposed to be very like mechanical so I you know Pee Wee's Big Adventure, right? You remember that? Yeah. The film, right? So they have this lovely lady who was an actress in it named E.G. Daly. And she uh, played Pee Wee's girlfriend. Can you bring her up? Do you mind? Um, she played Pee Wee's girlfriend in the original movie. And she also was the voice of uh, Tommy Pickles. Oh, my God. Can you get it on here? Yeah. Okay. Wow. There we go. So E.G. came on my podcast, Allegedly, which was my original podcast with uh, Matt Weiss. And she was awesome. She was extremely charming. And we kind of really related. She's super, super cool. And we related. And she invited me to this thing called Orgasmic Meditation. She, the second she spoke about it, I felt just into it. You wow. know, just click on just any of them. Maybe Tommy Pickles one. Um, so the second she, you know, I felt into it. So next thing you know, she invites me to this place downtown. And we're in this. It's like a seminar. They got coffee and, you know, a little bit of, you know, some pineapple cuts, some cuts of pineapple and cuts of different fruits, you know, at the front. People's milling around and doing that. Next thing you know, they got a lady up in there. They close the doors. About 250 people in there. They have a lady at the front. They got her spread eagle. You know what I'm saying? Which is, uh, which I think should be our uh, national bird. You know what I'm saying? Boy, I salute that, dude. I doubt any brothers would kneel if they fucking let that thing fly across the stadium. I know that. I wow. hope, that is. I hope you write that down. That's really funny. Well, I mean, that's just what's going on, you yeah. know. 
So anyhow, next thing you know, you know they're teaching you how to diddle, diddle the lady at the front of the room, right? Yes. And there's a doctor up there. Yeah. So fast forward five hours and a lunch break, they've got us paired off, partnered off in the different twosomes, and you're just diddling whoever you're set up with. And you're full. I mean, this you have gloves on. There's yeah. doctors walking around like it's like lost. It's like one of the, you know, what should have been maybe the last episode of Lost that they never put together because those dudes are fucking losers who couldn't, you know, who just wrote their way into selling advertising. But um, but anyhow, like, they got doc and you're touching a lady and people are spraying out across the room. Like, you can tell who's doing good and who's doing bad. Um, Wait a second. Can we talk about, like, it's what It's all in a room. Is? But, like, why, okay, why do the why. women enjoy it? Why do the men enjoy it? Great. What is the relationship? So here's the thing. They teach you how to pleasure a woman with your hand, right? The woman gets pleasured, and this goes back to what you were talking about earlier, feels like they don't have to give any reciprocation because there's no reciprocation for the man. But here's what the man gets. So you, you there's it's a 15-minute process, and it's a safe process where a woman knows she can feel sexual pleasure from an actual man and that they don't have to give anything in return. So it's a complete safe space to feel good. And also there are terms that the woman can give to the to her male instructor that lets the man know how they can better please the woman, right? And there's specific terms that don't make the man feel bad if he's not doing it right, right? So it's, it's very calculated. Um, and as a man, here's what you get. You actually get to make a woman feel good with a woman's permission and with a woman's direction in a comfortable way where you're not just guessing and assuming and going off of things you heard in grade school or things that some fucking, you know, you know, idiot or some, you know, older brother's friend who now works at a fucking Chevron or something for 40 years told you. And so you actually get to make a woman feel good. And so you leave out of there, bro. When you leave out of there, dude, you feel like, damn, just, you know, John Wayne Gacy or whatever. Who's the, um, John Wayne? Sorry. Not yeah, yeah, Gacy's a serial killer. <laughs> but you feel like, you know, like you have like, you know, in your in your fingertips, you have the magic. Yeah. Because you got a woman off, you didn't get anything, you didn't get anything, you didn't bust, so you got all this chi built up. So you're rolling around town just with a magic touch, you know? You got that King Midas, you know? You got that clitoral King Midas you're running around. And um, What are the words, can you reveal, what are some of the things that women can say to direct you in different ways? Yeah, uh, higher, uh, lower, more pressure less pressure uh, can you go a little faster please can you go a little slower okay. please um, to the right you know to the left now slide now slide <laughs> no. and that was a joke I did use one time in the thing and it got a couple people to laugh and one lady even farted a couple people over when I did use that joke but so anyway so next thing you know I'm on the floor I'm in on the floor of a huge warehouse in downtown Los Angeles. There's about 80 people that are coupled off in a group of 40. Some people didn't even get partners. They got fucking sent off the island, bro. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it was like, whoa, sorry. Dude, but then, but next thing you know, you get to the end and you're like, wow, this lady came or didn't come but still felt good. What is? What do you do after she comes? Like, do you shake hands? Do you look at each you other? No, then you have to like slow down. It's like kind of like a downward stroke that you would use on the woman. It was like a downward pressure. And then in the end, you use like this kind of closing pressure. You like put both your hands on her vagina with like this, and you like kind of press on her for like two or three seconds. There's this whole template of how it all goes yeah. down. And I remember one guy they had in a wheelchair, he got partnered up with the lady. So this dude, I think, was like, his le you know, his legs, he didn't have any feeling his legs. He got hit by a fucking car, bus, or something, or thrown off a horse or something. But um, we had to pick him up out of a wheelchair. And <laughs> he got thrown off a horse and then got hit by a bus. Oh, it could have been, dude. <laughs> could have been a double Ooh, whammy. that fucking HB combo, bro. <laughs> <laughs> you got it. Horse bus. <laughs> Nothing's working after that. Bro, it's nothing after that. But the wild part was, I remember lifting him up out of the wheelchair and laying him next to his partner so he could still use his arm. So he got it, you know, he did his job. And I remember when we put him back in the wheelchair, he felt lighter. Oh. So you could feel like he just felt. He got some mojo back. Yeah. Because it's got to be taken from you when you're in a wheelchair and, and, and feel maybe, maybe that was like his way of. Yeah. I mean, I think if he'd have done four more ladies, he'd have fucking waltzed out of that bitch, you know? <laughs> But it's just crazy the empowerment that you get by not by making somebody else feel good. And so then next thing you know, you're in the group. You meet up once or twice a week. There's like these crazy meetups, and you're diddling whoever shows up. You're partnering up. There's almost a square dance thing in the beginning where it's like, would you, is it okay if we uh, om? They call it oming, oming or yeah. gasic meditation. Is it okay if we om together? And next thing you're like, yes. So you partner up and 
you know, you set each other off and you're diddling 50, 60, 70 year old women, you know? I mean, I'll, you literally, like, you, these are women that you're not, like, attracted to. Oh, no. Not. I was best looking man and woman in the whole fucking place. <laughs> a lot of times. But then you're on it. Then you're then you're. They have an app you're on, and now you're fucking driving around town. You have a business meeting, and a half hour later, you're in some apartment. You're. In, I was in a nice house in the hills a couple times. And then, what is the process before and after when you're meeting with these women? I'm. I'm what's the conversation leading a, a, before and after? So everybody's on a tight time scale. You know, it's like people are living their regular lives, but yeah. they want to have this moment. It's almost. It's a meditation. It really is. I literally definitely need to do this because I need to have orgasms that are brought on by someone else but I don't want all the follow up of like will he call me or like do I like him or do you I need have to blow him escort then it sounds like it's not like you need an escort no why not this what's what's the difference so you could between- do this so this is what happens I would show up we would have, we'd have text in advance communicate in advance okay I'll be there 12 15 you know I'm five minutes late no worries so we get there and the person, uh, the woman has a nest set up and a nest is just a way you set up pillows and a towel so that they can lay down so the woman can lay down. The man you roll in, you got your bat, you got your little gloves, you got your, you know, and straight up, dude, I've always wanted to be at my heart, I believe a cafeteria worker, right? Deep inside of me, there's a fucking beautiful big lady, fucking scooping cobbler, at, you know, into the plate of a young boy who's hurting in a lot of different ways, but for a moment feels some warmth when he sees this woman, you know? And there's also like unnecessary hairnets everywhere, you know? And I fucking love that. And so, uh, so anyway, you know, you show up, you have your gloves, you have your little thing of, uh, of lube, and you know, you show up, and the woman takes her pants off, and you're sitting, you kind of sit cross-legged, so the lady lays down, you put a leg over her body, so you're facing just her vagina, you're not even looking at her Yeah, at like front. she doesn't have to, you don't make eye contact. It's none of that shit, you know. This ain't, yeah, this ain't a family, you know. I love the leg over, because it like holds you down, it's a little bit of... It's secure. It's yeah. like whenever you get onto the... Uh, it's like whenever you get onto the Batman ride at fucking Six Flags, and yep. you're like, where's the, and you're like. Yeah. And it's just a simple bar, but you're like, no, I feel, I'm not going to fall out. Yeah, I'm not going to fall out. Did I make sure I put my camera in the cubby hole before I got on? Yes, I did. <laughs> Everything's secure, right? So then, you know, you have the woman's uh, underpants off, you have the vagina, you're kind of looking down at it, and then you just have this kind of stroke that you start to do, you know? Right, they teach you this method. Yeah, and they teach you this method, and the woman knows what's going on, and you've learned the method in the classroom, so now it's a real practical thing. And man, it seems to be a thing that functions constantly and that people do. Nobody's raping each other. There's not a lot of that. It's like a meditation that is um, apparently is respected by a lot of people. And they they used to charge like to be in like the group that was like a fee to learn it. Now I don't even think they charge. Wow. I think it's just a you know, just a thing that's going on. Now what happened to me was I got fucking attacked by a Bichon while I was touching this lady up in um Topanga Canyon. <laughs> So that's where I was thinking about getting a lawyer and stuff. And finally, I'm like, man, fuck it, man. You got, like, bit. You literally- huh? Yeah, this thing fucking bit me, dog. And I respect it. You know, and I told her to lock the dog up. That was the thing. And I've been yeah. over there a couple times. And it's hard to also fend a dog off while you're trying to touch a woman's crotch. You know what I'm saying? God. But look, I've had experience with that going full circle, trying to fuck while people are throwing rocks at sure, you. Sure, sure. So it all this kind of... all coming back It's all a little around. bit full circle. Do you still do this? I don't do it. I would get back into it. Um... What made you get away from it? The Bashan attack? Yeah. Yeah. Definitely the attack. And I've shared a room with the Bashan. I shared a room with a chow, too, when I was in college. Not an Asian person, an actual fucking right. animal. And and so I've been around, you know, some some dogs. I've been attacked by dogs. I got attacked by dogs and cats one time on my birthday. Well, you've you know, seen I've had a, different experiences with animals. You've seen a lot of vaginas through doing this. Like, how many girls do you think you've owned? With <sighs> Maybe 30. Okay. What um what have you learned about vaginas like cuz that's a different that's a different thing than a hookup cuz in a hookup a lot of times you don't get to like really look and see like what the mechanics right. are have you learned about vaginas in a way that maybe I don't even understand cuz I only know mine yeah. like what what are what are you seeing out there I've learned What do you like what do you don't like what is um what are some recommendations if you were if you were, if you were about to go service a woman, mm-hmm. what would you want her to do down there? Check like, it out. Make sure that thing's running top oil. You know, nothing wild down there. I don't want some. You know, you should have got it serviced a couple times. You've been skipping out because you. You know, uh, just make sure that your vagina is like kind of. You know, you want to have clean, a clean vagina. Clean. Yeah, because there's a lot. I would say one out of seven vaginas is not clean. How could they not clean up if they know you're coming over? Clean your. Just to, also, I used to know a girl, and this is she would put a finger in her vagina and then taste it herself to make sure that it tasted okay. 
Yeah. 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 Which seems very wild to me. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I fucking... I've slipped over to the buffet and had something off of it before I paid for it. Sure. But uh, I've never done anything like that. Yeah, know? I've done that before. Because but you I respected go, it. Yeah. I respected it. It's like, yeah, know what's going on. It's the same and thing like as a guy. Like you'll do this and on with your cock and rub your hands. You well, know? I'm, I'll probably lick myself off your face. So I've, I'm not opposed right. to like that, like tasting myself. I think it's actually kind of hot. So like you might as well be like, okay, what? am I having a good day? Right. Like, and what's like, going on? Yeah, Do yeah. I need to fucking toss a mint in there? You yes, know? sometimes you just need to, like, do something else. A vagint. Just, yeah. A, <laughs> I can't believe those don't exist. Vagints. I, one not. time, I Tighten had... Tighten up, ladies. Vagints. I, you and I should yeah, definitely sell those. Okay, I so. put a um, gummy worm up my vagina once because my... Um, or was that that game? There used to be a game people were doing online. Oh, really? That hiding gummy worms in their vagina. No way. Yeah, it was like, uh, or no, somebody reenacted like Lord of the Flies where they had like a cave and it looked like the gummy worms were coming out. That's funny. No, I did this because I was picking up my ex-boyfriend at, uh, boyfriend at the time at the oh, airport. Oh, you wanted to tell him. And he was, it was, his favorite food was these like gummy worms and I would always buy them for him. And I was picking him up at the airport and I knew that he would finger me immediately when we got in the car because it's my favorite thing. And getting, driving while you're being fingered is like oh, so yeah. exciting. So I put like one New in Jersey. right before I picked him up. Yeah. So he gets in the car and he's fingering me and he's like, what the fuck? Is-? And he pulled out a gummy worm wow. and it was just like a funny joke. That's awesome. Yeah, it was It was pretty good. Um, <laughs> no, definitely. And that, and that. I think and, that's a, so a vagin. And we just sold a thousand magic kits. <laughs> um, a vagin, no, it seems good. But here's what I'm saying is that. Uh, um, you need to get back into it. Oh, yeah. Like. You I just got it. Yeah. It just the scent. That was the biggest thing. Oh, and yeah. outside of that, that was it. I mean, there's this, you know, I noticed this as well. Like it gave me a different respect for women. Because if you're like pleasuring a woman who's 65 years old. You know, it's like you start to realize, oh, that like, you know, older women do, you know, they are still women. They are, they do need pleasure and they do, you should treat them like a woman. Like that's what it made me, it made me realize a little bit more like, oh, you know, this is a woman. This is a different thing than I may not want to fuck her, but she's still a woman that has sexual desires and deserves. Yes. And deserves like some sort of treatment or some, it just puts things in a different it puts things in a different frame than our society puts things in. Dude, I like seeing rare things, man. They used to have, I remember, they had somebody who called in our podcast and they said uh, they'd never seen a black little person before. Oh, like a black midget? Yeah. And they had one in our town, dude, and he had these dreads, right? This dude named uh, No Dante, right? No Dante? Yeah. And he had these dreads, bro. And they he, they were so long, he would fucking trip over them when he was running, bro. Oh, fuck. But he was a fucking G, dude. Yeah. And he would play basketball, but he would like, he would kind of cheat a little bit because it was almost like soccer. Sometimes you'd almost catch him playing soccer, but he was so fast, you could barely see it. You like know? he would kick you with his feet, but since he was short, you'd let it slide? Yeah, you'd let it slide. Not where I come from. But really? Go- no, 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 no. You can't have that. Yeah, man. People, I think he was like a town mascot. People loved him, man. I don't know what happened. I love, I love how you take calls on your yeah, show. Like we that, had a brother man. named Quincidence in our town, No, you didn't. Yeah. Coincidence? True story. Best brother name I've ever heard. Coincidence? Um, you ever seen the mom that named their, her two kids, LaWasha La Dryer? <laughs> no, that's yeah, awesome. That's real. Man. That's real. Um, but one of my favorites was, oh, uh, uh, this lady in my town named her kid No Dante. She goes, because I knew he was going to be bad, I was just going to call him Dante. <laughs> But I knew he was going to be bad, so I call him No Dante. <laughs> so when I say his name, he already know. He already he's not know. supposed to be doing it. He know what's up. <laughs> That's so great, dude. It's brilliant, really. No Danny. I would name all my kids that. No Susie. <laughs> Everything. And this girl had the smallest head, dude. And her hair made it look like her head was regular size. But then it's tiny. But if you would start, like, kissing her and touching, like, grabbing her head or you anything, you could almost, yeah. You could almost, you could touch like the back of, like the base of her neck, like that little part, that indent in the back of her neck, and then all the way in between the front of her God eyes. Damn, tiny. Yeah, it was so tiny. It was just a little tiny mousey thing. Oh, dude. And then regular body. Regular body. It was like, a, it was like the movie Beetlejuice where they sprinkled the dust. You remember that? Yeah. Yeah, man. She had that regular body, but she had that. Uh, yeah, she had that real just. I don't know what kind of head it tiny was. Head. It was just, yeah. Tiny head, tiny brain. Did you ever, uh, it was you, a you head. ever been with a girl when you, you feel their head and you can feel the tracks? 
Like they have extensions oh, yeah. put in. Now girls do traps almost. Yeah. Like it's almost like, it's even white girls. It's like a weave, but they put it in there. I like the traps. I, I like the tracks, you know? You feel like you can feel around in there and maybe find a bag of dope or something, you know? <laughs> I don't like it, man. You don't? No. Yeah. Leave that shit now. Kizzy Laurent, the toughest fucking man I've ever met was this woman, Kizzy Laurent. <laughs> My God, You ready dude. to? We she going? could jump over a volleyball net, dude. Oh, yeah? Yeah. I mean, she was tough as hell. And she has a son now, actually, who's a... I think he just got, he's playing college. He might be playing at Georgia or something, but he was a beast. A beast. He was like the top running back in uh, in Louisiana last year. Um, last name Fournette? No, Broomfield is his name. No, he's still in, he just got out of high school. I met a gay man, because we both bust tables at, um, it could have been Italian food. I don't remember what kind of food it was. <coughs> vague bistro. Yeah, it doesn't matter. It was vague bistro. Yeah, all right. And vague it was, um, bistro. it was, it was. And, uh, and then what happened was he, Ended up having drugs. He was Italian. He looked like Don Flamenco from um, Mike Tyson's Punch Out. Can you bring up a picture of Don Flamenco? The guy please? with the rose in his mouth. <laughs> was that the rose in his mouth? <laughs> yeah, that guy. That guy. Oh yeah. Bring him I up. He was the first Wait, guy I don't you know fought. Who he is. There he, was he the first is. Guy you fought. Right there. Yeah, this guy with the rose in your fifth mouth. Fifth one to the right. One more. Boom. <clears throat> that guy. Okay. He looked just like him, right? Okay. And he was homosexual. Right. And he uh, was a bus boy as well, even though he was an adult. And he got me into doing uh, steroids, and we used to run marijuana back and forth across the Causeway Bridge, right? Pounds of marijuana. And he actually did a bunch of pills later and died, drove into an embankment. But one night I'm over at his house, Side dude. note. One night I'm over at his house, Princess Diana died. I didn't know who Princess Diana was, dude. Really? I thought Princess Diana was, like, the mayor of our town or something. Like, I didn't really know what was going on. Locally, okay. You know? Yeah, yeah. We're sitting over at his house high on some marijuana. And he started crying and saying Princess Diana died. And he had just made us some chicken, me and him ain't for one. And we're sitting there just having a meal. I don't know who Princess Diana was. I was high as fuck. And then he said he had steroids. And then he next couple you. months, we used to go, I think he loved me, honestly. Yeah. Did, did, How old were you? Did you guys ever... Uh, we never made out or anything like that? Nothing. I was 16. Did he ever make yeah, like a uh, Kevin Spacey move on you or nothing? Like, nope. let me see if I can hold you down, Theo. He just always took care of me. Did so he? I think it was like kind of like almost like yeah, a father, father figure kind of thing. Because yeah, yeah. he was probably about 30. He was a 30 year old bus. You were how old at the time? I was probably 15 or 16. So he loved oh. you. He loved me, I like think. He, yeah. In a weird way, too, though. Man. Yeah, but just like in it. But he was also the toughest dude in the Brent world, bro. Brent is trying to get like. Dude, this but dude in a would weird knock, way. He would knock anybody in or out. He might even knock this girl out. A really? tough guy? Yeah, he's a tough guy. I mean, he was just a tough, like. <clears throat> tough, tough, suck your dick type of dude. Oh, who, dude, he'll suck your dick and then knock you the fuck out. Did Ooh. you ever see him, like, fucking dudes or anything since he was a his father? Punching dick suck. Nuh-uh. He, I think he might, uh, no, he would just accuse everybody of being gay all the time. You know? <laughs> Which I was doing anyway, too, oh, so yeah. it was fun. You yeah, know? it was fun. I was, like, at that age where everybody's like, you're gay. I, I, you know? I know a lot Did of you live gay with men seem to do that a lot. No, he lived with my brother, though. Uh, oh, okay. I set him up with my brother. They both needed a roommate, and they were good friends. He was a good friend to me, man. He took care of me. Just he was just like a, a buddy. Like I never had like kind of like a older brother kind of father. Just like kind of that figure. He was, was sad. Open, he was died. he open about his game? I was sad that he died. Yeah, he was open about it. Okay. And he was cool. And then he uh, and we were both bus boys. You know, he he couldn't get gainful employment because he had um, he'd been in jail, in and out of jail. Yeah, and, a felony. Yeah, and I couldn't get gainful employment because I was 15. You know, so it's kind uh, of like that. You know, we met in that weird couple. space. Yeah, it was the odd couple. Yeah. But then we started doing drug, doing testosterone. And we pull over on you the side of the interstate. You were 16 years old during testosterone. We pull over on the side of the interstate and shoot in each other's butt cheeks. Damn, he never tried nothing. Never tried crazy. anything. Never even touched my butt weird or anything, man. Wow. Really? He would yeah. inject you with the testosterone. Yeah. I like, mean, I was afraid to do it. You like know? once a week? I don't remember what it was. You know, we just did a cycle of it or whatever. He was probably, he was probably grooming you. He was like, as soon as this kid turns 18. Oh, no. I think, I mean, I'm one from you. Can, you know, it's you can, good. Yeah, you'll cheat if somebody's yeah, under age. Yeah, I don't give a fuck. Yeah, I it's mean, out. but I don't think he was trying. I don't think he was doing that. I never felt that. It's the sound. No, he's trying to take care of you. Know, fuck, you, it's the that, sound. you have that common, you know, steroid secret. Yeah, and he just, uh, yeah, he was a good dude, man. He was, he was probably like the first, yeah, he was just like a good friend, man. I know it sounds crazy, like, you know, but I, I think he, I think he dated, uh, you know, I think I might have. He told me about dates he went on and shit, you know. So I don't, I don't think he was trying to. Were like, you dating girls me. and shit? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You I was. I was dating girls. Yeah. He would come. He would like. He we throw. Him and my brother would throw parties. Cause both of them were um, partying and stuff. So they would throw parties, and I'd have big parties. We had this dude in our neighborhood growing up named Herbie that would wear these heels, dude. That his own family made them, and they were like <laughs> three, maybe four, maybe four inches high, right? Full shoe heel. Two six one. Oh, dude, look. And then he would comb his hair straight up. So he was like. 
a small person just a book ended between just <laughs> fucking things god didn't give him you know why would he do how old was he uh he might have been anywhere we were kids so he could have been anywhere from 20 to 40 you know god I could, yeah don't do that dude like, he just was, rocked your height man <laughs> bro he couldn't and his grandparents were tall and were little and they fucked and that's what happens you know you can't yeah you get them shitty genetics oh his grandmother I don't even know. She might have been three and a she half busted. feet tall. She busted. She wasn't a little person either. She was like a little person, but but like with giganticism. You know what I'm talking about? You ever see a little person just rocking that cusp like they fucking yeah. fought through it? Like they're the big little yeah, person? Yeah. yeah. Where they don't have that fat ass? Yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Like That's, they look normal, just really small. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like not a real little person. Yeah, yeah. but little people all are always, little, all little people have fat asses. They do. Ph fat, not like no. Oh like yeah, muscled ass. Oh, we had this well. deaf kid in our town. Mm, I'll tell you this, because I lived in the pretty much in the deaf belt, dude. Growing up, the deaf belt. They had a lot of deaf by us because they had a couple of hearing impaired schools by us, and um, and so you get a lot of extra, <laughs> extra deaf in the area, you yeah. know. And it's wild when you have a lot of deaf people around because you don't know if somebody's fucked up or if they're deaf. Mm. You know, so you're driving by or if they're being rude, you know? So you have to be careful. I remember one time that they had a deaf kid that moved in right two doors down from us. Handsome kid, too. Like he could have been Italian, could have been kind of Creole. Yeah. But some kids beat him up. They thought he was doing bad magic, you know? Because he was doing all this stuff with his hands, but... They fucked his ass. Yeah, because he wasn't making. They ain't having it. Yeah, yeah. He was doing all of Especially this. Especially in New Orleans, you gotta be careful of that bad magic shit. Yeah, because he kept doing all those hand signals, you know. But no quarters, no doves. They thought he was doing bad magic, <laughs> and they fucking beat his ass, man. Fucked his ass, man. So that's the kind of stuff that I don't like in the world, man. When people are, you know, just not trying to be a little more patient with each other. Nah, they're real fucked up. Right yeah, now. I think that sometimes, like I drove past Tiffany Lane's bowling alley yesterday on Highway 190. And I lost my virginity back there. You really? Know? Yeah. How, who, who was the young lady? Um, or a woman? It was a girl. It was a, how old? Yeah, we were both children, and that's legal. How old were you? And uh, I was probably 17. And people were throwing rocks at us the whole time we were fucking. What? Yeah, very why? Middle Eastern. I don't know why. <laughs> Middle Eastern. But if you never... Yeah, it's you hard can't... to fucking duck, bro. Fucking hot and... Yeah, but whatever it takes to bust that <laughs> up. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> whatever it takes... She took, well, the, she took a piece of shale. She took a piece of shale of the neck that I fucking and stayed on. Oh, dude, I can still. Yeah, that's that Louisiana shit. Like, is that a hickey? Uh, nah, not for me, brother. You know, she, so that you might be a limestone hickey, but that ain't for me, so you, Dad. So you just powered through it. I had to, man. I was young, and all I wanted to do was fuck, man. At that point, it's. I feel like semen is just hiding under your skin, ready to get out any way it could. You have to get it out. Like, yeah, you break your arm and just come all over the place. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like any, like anything, somebody sneezed and you'd have a fucking, you I know, agree. just skeet all over your fucking cousin. <laughs> yeah, some know? bust on your face. Yeah. Um, but, so, they're just throwing rocks at you? When you're trying yeah, to people were throwing rocks. People were excited, you know? And that's how they celebrate? <laughs> some of these kids, yeah, yeah, people get them, Theo. <laughs> get them, bro. Yeah. Oh, fuck. Come on, buddy. You know, get in there. We had one handicap kid, and he it? always said, "Get in there, no matter what you were doing." Yeah, dude. get in there. They could be ro like dropping somebody at a funeral in town into the grave, and he get in there. Get in there. <laughs> he would always say that, and he would recite some like ACDC lyrics every now and then. He had a mental, he had a mental condition. Yeah. And uh, and so that boy would go off, and um, and he was there for it when you lost your virginity. Well, he was. Yeah, people always bring him into shit. Be like, oh, let's get get in there. That's what they called him. Get in there. Yeah. They like put him in the back. You know, like, can't get right. yeah. So there'd be basketball games, it's great, you know, get in there! You that just hear sense. it every now and yeah, then, get yeah. you fired up. Yeah, you know, when not you're trying to sex, though. Yeah, when you're trying to fuck, get you know, there. and hide from a fucking shale storm, you know, there's it's a, a few, little bit more there's a few, not these, not this day and age, there's no one who has like, this, as a grown man, has catchphrases, but he, when you're a kid, there was. Yeah, when you were a kid, there was catchphrases. They used to do this thing in my neighborhood, would be like, yeah, mad, did people ever do that by you? Do what? If you were mad, right? Say if you were upset about something. Yeah. People could tell you were upset. They would be like this. Yeah, mad. No. They, and they would no. hit their throat with their hands. Oh, no. No, and definitely dude, not. There's something about it. It makes you so much madder. So when you're like reason. upset, they go, oh, you mad. Yeah. But right up in your face, you'd be like, yeah, mad. <laughs> Bro. It makes you so much madder that you I fucking like start lose laughing. your mind. I love that. Oh, yeah, but no. I feel like it'd make me laugh. Not when you're a kid and you're mad, though. Yeah, that makes sense. When you're a kid and you're mad, dude, and somebody's like, yeah, mad. <laughs> it's mocking you. Oh, oh, if I can. Bro, it burn. It's like somebody taking the top of your spine and just starting to twist. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Oh. I, I feel like I'd be cool with that. 
Did you use protection with this young lady? <laughs> no. No. There was a time was period I feel like where people you? used protection. I feel like it's going away more. It's going away. <laughs> right? I feel like it's going away more. I feel like it's going here. No, what we used to do, dude, now they had a buddy of mine, this guy, Billy Conforto, and he was uh, homosexual. And we were bus boys. He was a bus man. He looked like Don Flamenco from Mike Tyson's Punch Out. Remember that show? Oh, yeah, with that. Yeah. The, the rose? Yeah. 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 yeah, the guy who was like a waiter during the day. Yeah, Google that bar. shit, Chin. Fuck, man. We're out here describing this. Oh, Chen's shitty. turning American, bro. He used to be so on it, dude. He used oh, to be dude. so on it. Be, I've uh, never, I've never experienced anything like it. Uh, Mike Don Tyson's Flamenco. Punch out. No, the guy that Don Russian. Flamenco. If you just put Don, but, there you go. Yeah, Russian guy. No, you're not Russian, bro. Wasn't he French? He's French. My buddy looked just like him, exactly like him. My buddy was but a boxer. Dick. No, but my, my buddy did. He preferred cock, Nothing but he was also a boxer. Dude, he would fight. He would. Bro, he could, I mean, he would fight you and then fuck you after if you wanted to. Mm -hmm. It's up to you guys. Yeah. But he was the toughest dude I knew, and he was a busboy at this place because they wouldn't let him be a waiter because the guy who worked there or something was, had some issues. He didn't want gay waiters. Oh, and I was he, had like, that, he had that list, though? Uh, it's distracting. Dude, no, he was a fighter. He was, he was probably the toughest dude I know, which was crazy because, you know, this was a time, you know, when they didn't have as many tough gay men, mm -hmm. you know? Now you got all kind of tough gay men. You oh, know, you got um. You better watch your piece. The and WWE. Yeah, WWE. I'm sure you got some NFL dudes. Oh, you got the Indianapolis Colts. Dick. Oh yeah, you know some Browns. Oh yeah, you got some guys, bro. But this was when and Billy uh and Billy Conforto when he died he ate a bunch of pills and drove into an embankment. But was that on purpose or he's like trying to party? I don't know. But I will say this, man. Whenever we were kids, he um. <laughs> We used to do steroids on the side of the interstate. We'd pull up the side of the interstate and just shoot each other Good up. Good place to do it. There's nowhere else in the world to do it. Well, dude, but nobody's thinking, oh, those two guys on the side of the interstate, they just think, oh, the car's broken No, down. that's exactly what I think. <laughs> really? I think those two are injecting D-ball in their ass and sucking each other up. <laughs> oh, no, dude, you're gross, bro. You don't think about that? Bro, you should think. I would think about a million other things before I would think about if that. If I see you with that you're haircut and some guy. dude who looks like a French fucking... You're assassin, I would talking? assume you guys are injecting dude. fucking Winstrol and sucking each other's gravy. What are you talking about, dude? You look like you work at a gay construction. You look like you sell two by four skins. You dude, fucking. Hold on, but keep telling the story. <laughs> so you, so you and your boy would just inject each other and then be like, dude, you look that like was somebody fun. like everybody else is like, I'm getting a sex change. You're like, nah, I'm just gonna fucking power. I'm just gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna earn it. You know what I'm saying? Dude? I'm gonna force it. Yeah, I'm gonna get it medically I'm done, gonna, bro. I'm gonna. Dude, you're bro, your dick's gonna hide in your body and you're gonna be sitting down to pee for the rest of your life soon if you don't start taking care of yourself. I uh, do, I'm trying, man. So we'd pull off and we'd spend time like that. We would do drug, we would do uh, uppers, you know, muscular uppers. And then we would hit the, um, we would hit the, uh, you know, the gym and everything. And then we all, he also sold weed. So I used to drive him across to New Orleans and he'd pick up like eight pounds of weed, dude. And, Sounds like uh, an awesome dude. And then, he had his demons though, huh? Yeah, yeah, he had his demons, man. He, I think he was like abused or something when he was growing up. And he used to fight dogs, too. He would fight pit bulls and rottweilers. Wow, what was his issue with them? He was just, I think this was a time when, you know, people like were still like, you know, probably treated gay people strangely or something. And so he didn't Not want... Not the rot, never from a rottweiler, though. But he, so he's like, I'm going to do whatever I can to be tough. And dude, he, people would, and he would knock him out, bro. He was the toughest He's dude. a badass. He was badass, bro. And he's a bus boy. So we're out there slinging butters and fucking huffing whipped cream in the uh, freezer. Damn, getting loose. Getting loose? What do you mean working hard, bro? You ever been a bus boy? <laughs> That's what you fucking I was did, a janitor, dude. bro. You were? I was a janitor. Bro. Get, in Get, in yeah. <laughs> Get in there! Get in there! Get in there! But yeah, this boy would stand at the, the mentally handicapped kid in our neighborhood. He lived down at the end of the street and he would just do ACDC lyrics, you know? But I was about to rock! And he just over and over? <laughs> yeah, he, yeah, he just, he'd be on his porch like this. I'm not bad though. I'd rather I'd prefer that than him like rocking out some bullshit. No, he, he, he was good heavy. Taste. Oh, he was like, growing up. They had this dude you could go watch him. Not really jerk off, but you could watch him, kind of feel himself in this video store. And he was uh, <laughs> older gentleman. He was older to us. We were children. Everybody was. But he was. Um, they had like these wild western doors at this place called Pat's Video, and they sold shrimp too, right? So the place is kind of been videos. <laughs> yeah, dude, sure sounds video. like a dream. Oh, I agree. You'd get fucking Bloodsport and a bag of shrimp? <laughs> That's exactly what we got. Fucking right you would, bro. bro. There was only a couple movies out then. It was all Jean-Claude Van Damme. 
You bet. Do they have cyborg? Um, I don't know what they had. Cy- oh wait, uh, I don't remember what that was. All right, that was a little bit before me. Double Impact. Um, yeah, they had Double Impact. They had American Ninja Warrior. I mean, they only had like six movies. Then outside of that, they had Shrimp. But then in the back, they had these two wild western doors. And Twenty one and up. Oh yeah, and we'd sneak over there sometimes, and they always have this dude in there, Mister Ernest, who lived in our town, right? And he later on, we we learned that he was a mentally handicapped. But he but was... He jack off. Yeah. I mean, I don't think... He wasn't, like, dick handicapped. He was just mentally. Yeah, but wanted to bust nuts and work at the video store. Yeah, he wasn't working there, though. He was... Oh, he just hung out back there? He was working for himself. Oh, this got weird. Yeah. Oh, so he just hang out in that 21 and up video. Yeah, he was hanging out in oh, 21 Because legally, he could be in there. So to him, it was like, oh, was, yeah, I'm, I, I can be in here. It was his Starbucks. Yeah, it was his Starbucks. It was his Starbucks. There you Starbucks. Go. But he had a, a bike, a bicycle that had a baby seat on the back, you know, because... Um, Somebody giving him a woman's bicycle. And back in the day, now you pull your kid in this little carriage and all this shit, and he's in a fucking safety cage with these roll bars. Hell yeah. Dude, when I was young, you was buckled in with one fucking buckle. Maybe in a, a plastic seat with yep. no fucking sides. Like this, yep. No helmet. This is before helmets, dude. Where if you got hit by something, your dad was in a fucking wheelchair forever. Word. You know? Back in the fucking when shit was legitimate. You, you Not did these you... pussy ass dads with a fucking bike helmet on. Like... I would much rather have a dad that's mentally handicapped from an accident locally than a dad who fucking had then ever seen my father in a fucking bike helmet. Like a and you can tell your dad that. <laughs> Come get it, dad. Oh, there's nothing. My dad, my dad put pegs on a, on his bike and me and my brother would stand oh, up that. That's, cool. What's up, you go. that's way dangerous, put dude. Put those pegs on. Hell yeah, it was dangerous. Dude, this girl Chrissy Hunt in my neighborhood lost her second toe to those fucking uh, standing on that barefoot. That was her issue. <laughs> and, that, and that second toe. And I don't even know how you get the second toe to do something the other ones aren't doing. The, 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 but the second toe's longer. Yeah, oh, that's what it is. The second toe, if, if it's kind of like your middle finger. It's always longer than the other it's one. got that reach, boy. Yeah, yeah, bro. So that second toe, the, the, yeah. the raptor claw, yeah. I can see how she got caught in that spoke there. Is that what happened? It, it is. And it ripped it off? Ripped it off, dude. It was out and about. It pulled it enough anywhere where I guess they couldn't fix it, you know? At least it's just that, well, that's a bad one to lose. If you want to lose any, you want to lose your pinky. Louisiana, yeah. hell yeah, I got spanked. Told By you. Lawton McKee, I'll tell you this dude, Lawton. He said he one of his teeth was in front of the other one, directly in front of it, bro. You know what I'm saying? He had that fucking, he was running that 2-5 defense in his mouth. You know, that He's front seven. He's running that I formation in his oh, mouth? Oh, he's running an I formation. He had the fullback in the front? Oh, yeah. I know that And the goes. party in the back, yep. you know? The wishbone. And he oh. said, uh, and I remember people would ask him what happened to his tooth, and he said he swung that paddle so hard that his fucking teeth it fucking shook his whole face up and God. knocked his teeth in front of Damn. each other. But that dude spanked me one time in his office. And when you came back from the principal, it was fucked up, but it was also people were like, damn, bro. You got some respect? You got some respect. It's kind man. of embarrassing, though. It was embarrassing, but there was a level of respect with it because you, you, you made through it through it. it. Yeah. Like, damn, that dude can get paddled. I, and it made you see, I don't want to get paddled. No. I'm going to keep my shit together. Sure, it worked, yeah. Now imagine there's no discipline in schools. What's going to happen to you? Would you be nothing? Think about that. Nothing is gonna happen. Well, and no. then we still expect our teachers to give a fuck when these asshole kids are running around. <laughs> so you, you know? Want, so you want to start hitting kids? I'm not saying start hitting them, but I I don't think you can discipline without hitting them. Yeah. And you can also discipline without being molested, dude. We had a great discipliner, Lawton McKee, a great man. He was a family man, and he spanked kids when they he needed. He also it. molested kids. He didn't molest anybody, dude. Yeah, I just assume in Louisiana they're molesting kids. No, bro. You're from Colorado. Do you know? Much easier it is to molest a kid at high altitude in Louisiana? who is undernourished Dude, with you water. you know how easy it is to molest a kid in Louisiana in huh? that thick, moisture air? Yeah, you can barely get your hand close to them. The air is so thick. Nah, By the time you, your hand gets close because it's you hard You blame to it on alligators down there. I know you guys do it, bro. No, an alligator touches kid's dick. Nobody's believing that. An alligator would bite that thing right off. Nah, dude. slap it with its tail, bro. No, and you guys got bro. catfish that suck kids off. I know what are you guys talking do it there, about? Bro. Most of our catfish these days are from Vietnam, dude. A lot of our market has gone abroad. Another race. Yeah, falling asleep everywhere. Falling asleep um, indoors, outdoors. Fell asleep. Um, oh, uh, 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 no, I've fallen asleep some really good places. Did, did you have those friends where you'd fall asleep, they'd fuck with you? I hate that shit. Like drawing your face, a dick. No, we didn't have any of that, dude. Our Take pictures, our, dicks in your mouth. Our vice principal stuff, used to sleep yeah, in his, fucking you. Our vice principal, Raleigh Coleman, who was an urban gentleman and who had a... Um, um, a I.E. Black Jerry Curl um, Ooh. Yeah he could have been black He was dark 
Jerry Curl, and, yeah, urban gentleman. He used to sleep in the trunk of his car at fucking recess, dude. He'd go sneak over by the teacher parking lot. Just because he didn't want anyone to see him? Yep, and he would tie off his trunk with a little rope so it was about three inches high, and he would get in the get that trunk of his car. At least it's dark, sleep. though, you know? It's not a bad idea. It'd be hot. Yeah. Especially I, in Louisiana. I don't know why he liked it, but I think he just felt comforted in there somehow. You know, well, maybe he didn't have a parent. I don't know what some of his issues The were. Jerry Curl would explain a little bit, but... Curled up, boy. Curled up. Wild right. Raleigh. You don't wow. see a lot of Jerry Curls this day and age. Mm -mm. Oh. And I asked somebody the other day if they would come back and some uh, guy got offended. Yeah, they had a dude in our neighborhood that didn't have any arms and always tried to fucking fight people. <laughs> By headbutting? Huh? He would headbutt? He would kick... Hold up. Let me guess. He would kick like an ostrich. Mm, oh, he could fucking kick crazy, dude. Figures, yeah. He had a... And they had this other kid in our town, a deaf kid. This fucking deaf kid with a fucking overbite, bro. And that dude would just... He'd fucking suck the blood out of your neck if he got close enough to you. Yeah, you gotta be careful of those. But man. this dude, Clint, was his name. Um, like, Clint, but with an N in it. This dude had no arms, dude. And he... But he could fucking literally get you on the ground and choke you out with his fucking shoulder. He would just apply that pressure. Crazy, bro. <clears throat> I mean, he would just be on two legs with that shoulder pointed right at your fucking esophagus. Did you? Do you ever have any kids with... Uh uh, it was violent her, around her us, Her mentally dude. handicapped. And he got a driver's license. That was a crazy part. I just remember that. Would he drive with his eyes? I don't know what the fuck he was doing, but he had a legal driver's license. How the fuck did that happen? No arms, one driver's license. Killing it. Not fair. Probably working for Uber now. Well, I doubt it, dude. Making he's probably, tips? He's probably in prison, dude. I remember he, uh... He, he did some bad stuff. Dude, this kid used to poop in his yard and make me bury it when I was growing up. This boy, Mario Rufino. Mario Rufino? Shout out to Mario Rufino. Why did Mario Rufino... Actually, he passed away. He, drove into, he actually drove a boat into an embankment. Oh, uh, God damn. Drugs again? It was drugs, I think. Drugs and alcohol. Wait, so he would poo into and say, hey, bro. He would shit on the yard and be like, yo, Theo, come bury it. In his yard. Make me hide it. Make me bury it. Why would you hide it? Was he older? He was older. And was he dropping logs? I don't remember that much about the actual poop, but it was, he was more, he was just older and I felt like, you know, to hang out, I had to cover his shit. Was that a fetish of his? Was he like, I don't know. Off while you were he was not able to communicate well about his thoughts or feelings. And so I just remember he'd shit, I'd bury it. <laughs> and that was our, a lot of our friendship. That was the relationship. You didn't play like cars or video games, you just played the shit game. I mean, I think we did other stuff, but he was like always kind of like, he was like loud and that like was aggressive. I was passive, you know. Had a fucking shovel, and that was it, yeah. bro. That was our relationship. All right. Yeah, I probably buried 200 of that man's poop in the yard. <laughs> wow. It's a lot of poop in a jar, though, so it never really disintegrates or gets absorbed. Not in a jar. No, oh, you know, jar. Why would you put it in a jar? Oh, Dude, who are, are you? No, he shits on the ground. I thought you said he shit in a jar. Am I crazy? Smuckers of shit over here. Well, I don't know. He's bombing shit. No, he's not. Oh he don't want to bring guys, it up. Man, I don't it's know. not gold. He's not We're bringing not it back up. Didn't you say? Didn't he say that he shat in a jar and I used to bury it? Shat in his yard. Oh, yard. So he shit in his yard, and you would go and bury it. But he died, though, huh? Shout out to shit. He ended up passing away. A lot of your uh, old friends and uh, acquaintances died. Yeah, I think people that end up doing drugs and, you know, driving machinery at high speed don't, the odds are against yeah. you. It doesn't mix. At a certain point, you know, when true. you think about it. Name anybody who uses a lot of drugs and drives at top speed who's still alive. I can't. I only know two and both of them died. But well, because we, well, I think the odds are so many more people get away with it. We just hear about the ones who get caught. Yeah, we had a boy and I, and this kid, I grew up with him actually. We used to go drink at the Ramada in our town. And he, um... The Ramada in... In, uh... This was in Louisiana, in Covington, Louisiana. And, uh... And I've even talked about this on my show. This boy, Derry, was his name. Derry? Yeah. Interesting name. And he, uh... He used to put people in that hard scarf. He called it the fucking hard scarf, dude. He had this fucking <laughs> headlock, bro. And you had to have somebody help you get out of it. You almost had to get two black kids to help, help you get out of it. He was that good? Oh, bro, when he put you in that fucking headlock, that hard scarf, boy. Nasty. It was over, dude. Yeah, I mean, he would kill you. If he if you didn't get a couple of brothers to come over and help you out of it, he'd fucking kill you. You ever had a man choke you out with uh, his tits? Uh-uh. But I had that boy Clint choke me out a couple times with his fucking shoulder and, I guess, I don't know if that's a rib or whatever that is. But, dude, it is crazy. I bet a lot of people that have deficiencies and stuff like that... What do you mean? ...immediately think you're their guy. You know what I'm saying? Like, I could see somebody with, like, a vitamin deficiency or, like, severe, you know, uh, DNA deficiency or something immediately being, like, a chromosome deficiency, being like, oh, this is our guy, you know? This is our mayor, you know? This is our Wizard of Oz. You don't think that at all? 
Come on, guy. <laughs> little guy. But I want to say this, you know what bro. Guy, look, guy, can I just say this, guy? Yeah. It's your tone, man. Is it really? Yeah, it's sometimes in... your tone, dude. Yeah. Yeah, man. That's it. My bad. I have eyes. I look at myself in the mirror. Oh, yeah. And I don't go, hey, like Fonzie, yeah. right? I just go, Ugh, you know what yeah. I mean? <laughs> but like, and so when I was at that coffee shop with her the first day, it was a long couch we were sitting on. Mm -hmm. And she was really close to me. And she just locked eyes with me. And she was literally interested in about everything that I was saying. Oh, that would scare me. Yeah, and she was hot too. So I was like, oh, this, what the fuck? You know, I was hard. Yeah. Oh, my oh, God. Yeah, yeah, my, my dick got hard. It's hard now. Oh, that's cool. You can't tell through the jeans. Mm, you can't tell. Yeah, I couldn't, I couldn't imagine telling at all. You know what? It happened with me. I went on a fast one time, and I, you know, I mean, people know this, but I almost, I fucking they had this dude at the Best Buy, this, this boy named Ben, and I think he might have been a man. You don't know. You know, you guys are kind of hide and go seek when it comes to what age you are. And, but he... I was so hungry, I hadn't eaten in five days, and I thought I could eat this man. Like, everybody kind of, I just had this weird thought come in my head, like, I can fucking eat this guy. Yeah. And he was Vietnamese. And I knew I, right I, then. The that way I could. you say that, though, Vietnamese is real crazy. Like, what do you mean, Vietnamese? Be Vietnamese. <laughs> I, I mean, the say, way you bro. say it. I don't move my neck like that. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Vietnamese. <laughs> no, it's, like, it's like you're back in Nam. And Whoa, you're like, bro. and you're you, Kevin Dillon, and you you're shooting a Vietnamese guy's leg, no. and he's hopping up and down. And you go, yeah, Dan's a Vietnamese, right. dude. No, I say the Viets, bro. You yeah, know what the I'm Viets. Saying? Yeah, I'll fucking gum down a Viet in a heartbeat, man. Yeah, you know I think I, yeah, because Vietnamese people to me very much a delicacy, very much edible, and very like passionate to the face. Yeah, no, man. You don't think? Nah, man. I think that. But what are um, you gonna eat? I dare you to eat a black woman, dude. She'll be pissed. <laughs> <laughs> what are you gonna fucking eat? Yeah, her just, you know. <laughs> oh, yeah. I get You're having her imagine. leg, but she's just sitting yeah. up there like. Mm -hmm. She's dead, but she's still, that's her like, <laughs> reflexes. You know what I mean? Is that? I'll tell you what I didn't learn. Okay, okay. say something. I didn't learn that um, a, frizz, a, a, cup, a, a cup and a plate are the same fucking thing. They're not the same thing. Depends on who you ask, depends on who, where you are, how strong the gravity is in an area, how fresh the cup. How recently you made it? How hot, how warm is the clay? A fucking cup is just a plate is just a wide wide cup. The sides can't get along. Bro. A poem? That's all it is. Yeah, no, man, that's the truth, dude. Wow. Go beat a plate apart with a hammer and then tape it together, yeah. and don't do a good job. You so would, a would a bowl be the same as a as a, as, a, as a plate? Go beat a cup apart. I'm sorry with a hammer. That's true. You Damn. flatten it out. Maybe there, there's and a tape plate. Tape it together. There. Right. What do you have? You have a fucking plate. Dude. You got a plate. And you fucking want. How does he Theo do Vaughn, you're, I don't know how you do it, dude. You're crafty, dude, huh? Chink mate, man. What did you say chink mate? <laughs> no, I didn't say chink. I said chick mate. I heard. I heard chink, chink mate. Oh, my bro. Bro. Don't set me up for racial shit, I'm not. Dude. I'm not. <laughs> I freaking you. Whoa. Well, you're, I would well, never, never say that. Can I just say this, though, dude? Yeah. A couple of things you did already, okay? <laughs> I would never you, say I, that, Put bro. your fucking <laughs> your strictly business glasses on, okay, dude? So this is what I'm saying, dude. dude. I just washed my hair today. I know yes. you look great. But what I was saying though is, is that you accused me of making tunnels. Mm -hmm. you, I didn't say that. And you I said, said you might have heard. You said checkmate. I would never, never say, say that, that, dude. Clever pun. Very clever. Yeah. I feel like for me, it's really hard for me to know what you guys' emotions are. Like I know, <laughs> like white emotion because I've been around it. You know, right. it's very easy. But Asian people, I feel like they never pay attention to me. Yeah. I feel like that they don't care about white people and I that's feel crazy really that's insane but they never say anything yet yeah, well, well the ones that don't speak English maybe they don't say anything to me either but it seems weird if you care like I don't know they just seem hard to interact with like look at time. me right now yeah. I love you I love you too no I really do love you I love you too as a human being and I love you too as a human being. and does that feel good or no yeah I believe you you do believe me yeah I was lying Wow. <laughs> I was that was good acting. Huh? <laughs> yeah. I don't really have any feelings towards wow, you. Bro. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh You're a piece God, of shit. You're a piece dude. of shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was like if you died, I would just be like, "What? Oh, Theo on. died?" I'd be like, "Oh, okay." Oh, come on. And I would just move on with my day. <laughs> dude, I what? know this. You guys are going to control the future, though. I was just in China, and bro, that is, you guys are coming in hot. <laughs> bro, what do you there mean? were what do you mean? oh, there were. I mean, some guy jumped off of a building, killed himself. Yeah. Seven Asian people came out of him, like just a lot. Like it's Whoa. not ending, bro. 
It's not ending with the Asians. It's full, you guys are going full throttle. So love is in the air. You guys have been lovers for how long? And this is her six. Six years of loving. Wow. Year yeah, together. Yeah. And when was the first time that you guys, if it's okay to talk about it, when was the first time that you guys had sexual intercourse? Mm, probably well, I, two months. No, that's not true. A month into our relationship. Month and it took a month. But he had to drive. I mean, to he Long had to Beach, bro. Every day. Did you really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I went, she she didn't even come to my place for a month. Did he Uber or did he drive? Did I he drove he to drove. fucking Long Beach every day. I'm asking the woman. He drove down there? He did. And, and he what didn't would try he do to mask his filth either. He didn't try to. No, he didn't try. He didn't clean his car. He oh. had piles of like bottles and just dirty underwear, everything. Oh, he, he wasn't my trying dad, to... bro. It's so gross. But I was like, okay, well, I, I respect that. This is his baseline and he's not trying to front like he's anybody else. Oh, that's pretty cool. Yeah. So there was no bait and switch, huh? Mm-mm. Did he... Uh, there were a few, but more of a... More of a maybe an effort thing, not really a cleanliness thing. From the get-go, I knew he was a he was a pig. Hy hy you know, hygiene-wise. He was a hygiene risk, they call it. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Hepatitis risk. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely. Wow. Were you asleep or awake? I had to get my booster shot. Did you really? Yeah. Oh, definitely, yeah. He seemed like that guy uh, who's definitely got that fever in him. You know, he's got the potential for, uh, he's got the potential for fever. Liver fever. Oh, if you look, I couldn't even imagine seeing one of his blood cells under a microscope. Who would even know? It's probably just sitting there fucking vaping, you know? Um, so you guys, the full one month and you guys got into sex. Now, how did mm -hmm. that kind of start? Because I'm, or where was the first date? Let's, because I just want to learn about love. It's Valentine's. I want to learn about y'all's love. We can talk about love. Dude, I feel like I'm on uh, Yellow Mirror. Have you seen that show? <laughs> <laughs> Got him. Dude, bro, dude, bro, 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 bro. Yellow Mirror yeah. was very good, <laughs> and I would have give you, I would have give you more of a laugh if I wasn't so enraged right now. <laughs> oh, sorry, man. Yeah, yeah. But you're Let me say something right now, dude. Okay. That was fucking funny as fuck. Thank you. All right, but okay. listen to me, okay? Yeah, I am. Don't talk to me that way. I won't do that. Okay, because I'm here as well. Yes. We fucked a month in. Okay. So, yeah, I can't believe Brendan Shaw tried to bang your girlfriend, dude. That's crazy. Yeah, I didn't say that. You mentioned that. No, I didn't say that. I'm just saying that there is, you know, in my head, there is that fear. Right. Do right. you think he would? Um, I think that if and this is I good. had died, mm -hmm. or if we broke up, that he would. What if you just got really sick for like a week? Like I was in a coma? If I, 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 I could see that. A where, coma, but you woke up to piss. Yeah, but I was in like a sleeping coma, like walking around coma. No, no, no. In the bed coma, but you get up to piss. So I'm time. not in a coma then. There's no coma like that. There could be. Okay, let's say I have this weird disease mm -hmm. where I have a, I'm have in a coma, but I can pee. Yeah. And, I, and, and if I think that if they the call it the yellow sleep, they call it. <laughs> you know? The, I've had the yellow sleep? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And it's just <laughs> yellow because of peeing, not because you're Asian. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> okay, well. I mean, <laughs> what you said. Okay. I know, but I'm just saying that. They call it. <laughs> I, I know. But they call it. I know, I know. But what I'm saying though is <laughs> what I'm saying. They call it General So's No, no yeah, yeah, you know. <laughs> they call it. But too. it's just like oh, I just want to say this is that just don't say yellow sleeve. My bad. Again, again they call it the Kung Pao coma. That's what they call <laughs> yeah. it. Yeah, pretty crazy, man. It's just tough, you know. It's 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 shit's getting real in these podcast streets. And I'll say this, Bobby. Whenever you pass away of some, you know, disease because you obviously have something if you're sleeping 23 hours a day bro after that you're asleep 24 hours a day that's dead so you're 60 minutes away from needing someone to take care of your beautiful girlfriend brother and don't you worry about it uh i will make sure that uh, i know you've been making sure she stays asleep i'll make sure she stays awake brother love you guys man you know and, and, and i want to say something crazy and i've never really said this before but I don't think I have any friends. Like, you're a friend, right? Yeah. But are we? Yeah, we're friends. I know, but... We're not, like, best friends. Exactly. Now. But also, in L.A., it's hard because we live far away. Yeah, in L.A. You sleep a lot. And we're both oh, out of town me. a lot. Don't blame it on me. 
but you do sleep a lot. I, that has nothing to do with our friendship. So do you? And, okay, so you guys had sex, time. and after that, then what happened? I mean, because then you would. We, 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 was there love in the air already? Was there pretty strong love, or were you guys still kind of figuring it out? Do you think? I'm just curious about love and like in the love be, and in the be, love. Dude, okay. I'll, I'll, I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna to be completely honest with you. Oh wow! Okay? Somebody's getting mugged. Yeah, over I, I'm going to be huh? completely honest with you right now. Okay. Is Sorry. is that I met her on Tinder? Yeah. Right. And I was smashing. Smash. Smashing. Gra- wow. Smashing grabs. In oh fact, wow. On our first date, he was showing me other Tinder dates. Yet. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. It was like that uh, show, uh, Supermarket Sweep. I think it was there was an episode of Highway to Heaven actually with Michael Landon and Victor French. You love Michael Landon <laughs> so much. Well, most of America does. So this is why you're disconnected. But um, he uh, they had an Asian boy on there, and I think they picked him up. He was a hitchhiker, and they picked him up and dropped him off in a different town. There's so. no way. Can you look that up, please? If there was an episode, please look that up. If, if there was an episode of what's the show called? Highway to Heaven. Highway to Heaven. And if there was an Asian boy hitchhiking. Probably one of the six or seven most popular shows. I've never even heard of it. And that's the truth. Really? Victor French won an Academy Award. Okay. This is if you're jerking off with a hat on, bro. <laughs> you're going to hell, a I think. Fedora. Yeah, that's the worst, bro. <laughs> that's the most French thing you can do. <clears throat> jacking off with them straw Kentucky Derby hats. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what's the worst hat to jack on? The anything? worst hat to jack Probably off. Probably a top hat because you have to balance yourself right. while you're jerking right. off. Yeah. One of them fucking chimney sweep hats. <laughs> yeah, well, the best would be one of those Chinese hats, bro, because if you squat down low enough to the ground, you can almost hide under it and jerk <laughs> off. <you know? laughs> those things would be dope, bro. The most confusing would be like one of them Daniel Boone raccoon caps. <laughs> yeah, but that you got that tail in your eye. <laughs> you push the, t- you blow the, t- the tails in the way. <laughs> get the fuck out of my way with this tail. Dutch are so aerodynamic. They move good. No, you ever seen a Dutch? They're really aerodynamic. They're the what? What do you do with your hands? Lean face, lean headed. <laughs> Tell them not. It's four inches cheek to cheek. They're big people, man. Dude, do you know how big they are? The Dutch? Oh, they're very tall. But yeah. they're very aerodynamic, very aerodynamic. The downhill people they call them, dude. <laughs> going into the matrix, they all are. Going into the matrix. Let me get my stuff first. <laughs> <laughs> what would you bring if I said, "Hey, dude, you can go in the matrix, but uh, you can bring three things"? I'd have to bring a picture of my family, and then I'd have to bring probably, I'd bring probably some water. <laughs> Would. <laughs> you think you'd need water in the Matrix? I'm not going to be the guy without it in there. <laughs> or maybe a toothbrush. <laughs> Dude, you're the only person with a freaking nice grill in the Matrix? You're getting some puss, bro. Dude, in cocaine, oh, go back to that vest story, man. So here's what happened. <laughs> so I, you know, I would get, I would do some cocaine at the house and put on these different vests. How many did you buy again? I don't know. I spent too much on them, but I would probably say... <laughs> The priciest one I had was probably about two hundred ten dollars. Nice. Damn. Yeah. And so I would get fucked up and put these vests on and put on sunglasses and not let, no like Buffalo Bill shit, but at least partying by myself, you know. Mm-hmm. And one time I was making a smoothie, you know, because I, you know, I have, I got like a new, I don't know what kind of blender it is, but it's pretty nice. And I was making like a nice smoothie and I'm fucking coked up, I'm partying, you know, mm. I'm living high on the hog. Two vests on, maybe right. And I thought, I, dude, I thought I heard something outside, right? Which is kind of weird to even think of when you have a blender going, right? So I leave out of my apartment to go in the hallway, lock myself out with the blender going. <laughs> Two thirty in the morning, coked up out of my brain, right? Now I have to go to my landlord, dude, uh, who lives right down the hall, oh no. and tell him. What activities do you think you do where you come a lot? Like the kind of people that like power oh. lifters probably shoot giant loads, right? Dude, this shit is getting gay, bro. Today, <laughs> <laughs> sorry, I got to it. It's just very dick oriented today. I wouldn't say it's gay. Well, it's that time of year. It's spring. People are refreshed. It's not spring. It's the middle of the winter. Yeah, it's freezing cold out. It's just January. Whatever. You guys <laughs> aren't open. You guys aren't open minded. <laughs> That's what I think. Bro. <laughs> It doesn't get more winter than okay. January. Well, it's not even a Groundhog's Day yet. Why don't I just say it's August? Okay. Why just scooping up shit? Imagine if your grandma just shit all over your yawn. 
just go out, go out on the lawn and just she shits in the yard, shits on the lawn. Like, oh, I was on her shit. I gotta go clean up her shit. Yeah, I love her, but God, I hate cleaning her shit. Yeah, I would hate cleaning up probably human shit for some reason. But I remember more than dog shit. Well, when I was a kid, they had a boy in our neighborhood named Mario, right? And he, uh, and he was dude. He ended up dying actually. He did some pills and drove into an embankment. But he, when I was young, he would shit in his yard, make me bury it, and that's how, <laughs> that's how I was allowed to be friends with him. Why, how did he make you bury it? He just asked me to do it, and I was afraid not to do it. I think. He said, hey, "Yo, dude, you're not gonna believe this, but I took a shit, and um, it's out my yard. I can't even bury it because I'll throw up." Did you make me go bury it? Yeah, he was, he, dude. He was dark, man. He had a, he had a real dark vision, and he would, uh, <laughs> he would. I mean, he probably, honestly, dude. <laughs> He probably shit 200, 300 times and I buried it. No! I swear to God. Come on! I swear really? to God. I swear to God, dude. And he, um... How'd you not run out of places to make new holes? Did you think you ever dug up old shit to put in new shit? Oh, yeah. I wouldn't be surprised, man. It, <laughs> we basically had, like, the only setup I had, and I didn't even have a strong system. The only setup I had was, like, a one of those plastic, uh, you know, beach... Oh, no. Like a beach setup. Dude, I'm talking, I was seven. So, wait a minute. The seven-year-old was doing this? How old was he? He was eight or nine. Oh, he was tricking you by being older. He was older. And two years when you're seven is a long stretch. You know, when you're 32, 32, 34, that doesn't mean shit. Whatever, dude. Seven and nine, that's a big stretch. Yeah, you go shit at your house, buddy. That's what I tell people now. (laughs) So, for... To, what he would what was the do you remember the first there's no way you really remember I remember what 100%. he said I don't remember what he said but I remember how did it happen how did it happen when you find yourself with a plastic shovel and another person's shit going damn how did it come to this well it came to it because he I know my brother probably wasn't around and I wanted somebody to play with and he mm. was older so I was hanging out and he was deviant man how so he just had a little bit of like um like he was kind of slithering, you know what I'm talking about? Mm. From, uh, he knew how to manipulate you. Yeah, he was obviously uh, you buried his shit 200 plus times. Like there wasn't he had the same color in the outside of his eye and the inside of his eye. You know what I'm talking like about? A demon. Yeah, like a light demon. El Diablo. Yeah, like an El Diablo, but mm. also who was in elementary school. Oh, interesting. Um, but he. Uh, so when you first found yourself, do you remember the the feeling that you first found when you were digging a hole for a dude's shit, like? Just thinking, what am I? How long can I do this? What if he keeps asking? How do I stop this? How did you wind up stopping? That's maybe a better question. You know what? I don't remember how it kind of, you know, pan, you know, how petered it kind off. of, yeah, petered off. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember how it kind of tapered off. You know? dude, his parents ever like, hey, do you ever shit in the house? How come we don't have any missing toilet paper? <laughs> well, dude, you know what? That's what I think it was. I think he was lazy. Where you know he was. <laughs> I'm serious. And he shat outside behind his sl- uh, slide. They had a slide in his yard because they had, you know, a little oh bit of money. God. And he shat outside behind the slide. Shat this is a great word, too, by the way. And it was silty kind of soil and sand. And I remember going over there. And I still remember doing. Yeah. Now I'm telling jokes. Jesus Christ. And yeah, and then telling people when you go back home and they've never seen you, they've never heard of you. They think you're gay. And it's just like, you won't, like, they're like, you keep flying home, you don't have any money, and you're right. not bringing a girl home. You're you have these from jokes. Something. Yeah, you're, you're hiding, hiding from, from something, something. You know? Yeah. Just come out. I remember my stepdad is yelling at me in the yard one time. Told you to come out? Yeah. I was like, I'm not fucking gay, bro. <laughs> I was like, I'm just not flying some girl home that I just met. You wow. know, just to prove to you, you guys. Can catch you. Yeah. So yeah. you can catch you in a lie. <laughs> If you, the worst has got to be if someone says you're gay and you are, but you don't want to. Oh admit yeah, it. that'd be like, sick. Shit. Scary. Yeah, you change shit. your clothes the next day. You come dressed like in a mafia outfit or something <laughs> like something to totally take them out off the trail. Or, you know, the meat. The uh, oh, you ate them. You saying? Yeah, but the you guys ate owls. Yeah, I don't I, think that's legal. You probably shouldn't say that on a podcast. Well, <laughs> I didn't have a lot. <laughs> I'll so tell you this, I if you say, want to feed a family of four, you can't just have one owl. I will say that, though. <laughs> well, if you look at what it looks like without the feathers, it looks like That's a I'm fucking demon. Yeah. You know? It's a real bait and switch, I feel like. It's one of God's hidden agendas. Well, I was talking to someone about peacocks about this, and I started talking about it on stage. I don't know. Yeah, that's a duck, bro. But it says peacock. That is oh, something man. else. That See, is that meningitis, doesn't seem I think. right, though. Go back up yeah, to the bro. peacock picture. They have a guy just dropped that rabbit and mm. said, fuck it. And I stopped the car and check it out. I was like, whoa. That's flirting, really, it sounds like. Flirting? Oh, if a oh, bird drops a know. rabbit at your feet? Hey, bitch. Yeah. yeah. It's ready to fuck. Probably. Yeah, like you didn't love the French? I love the Canadians. French Canadians. Yeah, I'll take them. 
You love Canadians, period. I love Canadians, period. But do you love French Canadians? Yes, because they are Canadian. But French, bro. Not into French? And nobody is. They make great wine. Yeah. That's not true. People go to Paris every year. Yeah, but they leave. (laughs) (laughs) It's not the kind of place people are milling around, man. (laughs) Like if a plane crashed, I already know I'm playing ahead, dude. I'd eat a Vietnamese guy. Why? Um, Because it's easy. It's a starter move. If you attack somebody bigger, if you eat somebody bigger in front of other people, it's going to alarm people. But you... You got to eat a small person, so stature is important. I think if you gum down a Viet, people aren't going to be that upset at you. Well, the the you know? Vietnamese people are going to be super upset. What are you talking about? No, Somebody's okay. dad. Yeah, they're sacrif- They're more <laughs> understanding of things, dude. Is this a character you're playing? No. <laughs> but if you eat a black, dude, you eat a black lady and her family's there, they're going to be pissed. So you think a Vietnamese person will let you slide? I think that they'd be much more forgiving over a couple of day period. Mm, I think, uh, like well, their relatives. You don't think so, honestly? Well, one thing, no, I don't think so. I definitely think they'd be super pissed at you, especially modernized ones. But what is interesting is like Vietnam is one of the few places where um, Americans can go back to Vietnam and they don't seem to hold any grudge at all. Exhibit A. <laughs> Exhibit A, man, honestly. It, well, Asian people in general are, are just much more forgiving and understanding it seems like I yeah feel like. i think i mean i don't have much i think i think that's a giant generalization it probably is you know i mean i did a fast for like four days and then i was at the best buy and um and i remember this vietnamese guy was trying to help me out and i couldn't even hear him i was so hungry <laughs> and I, I couldn't you did a fast for four days oh dude yeah well, what were you I, trying to prove i don't know man i was probably just dealing with some stuff and i was just trying to find a different way to handle it you know right um and then I remember this Vietnamese guy, and I remember thinking, if everybody turned the other way for a second, I could eat this young fella. You know, Ben. His name was Ben, actually, <laughs> over there in Westwood. Um, but I, and I'd never thought. Oh my thought, God, it's so ridiculous. But, well, I mean, but here's the thing: I'd never thought that before. So you only thought you got to the verge of cannibalism after just four days. Yeah. Damn. How much weight did you lose? I probably lost about four pounds. Pounds I needed too. You wow. Know? But I got clear, man. I could, and I could hear. I swear to God, y'all could hear somebody fold a piece of bread from 80 feet away, bro. I was so hungry, dude. I could hear a fucking Skittle hit the cement across the street. I really, I think you would think they do, but for their size and stuff, they're not doing that much. Who do you I, think shoots the biggest load? Basketball oh, I think players? a guy that's in space. I think a guy that's on a cliff, like a cliff climber. Yeah, but is that the biggest loads? I mean, that guy's shooting some fucking... Just because he has the balls to climb oh, up like that? He's busting Ooh, some real spackle. Is. Maybe that's what it is. Like, he, he's got balls. Right. Like, those guys shoot bigger loads. Yeah. Like, BMX jumpers, and they jump three times in the air and then land on the bike? Yeah. Maybe they have the biggest loads. Um, also, guys who, like, fake put a sign on their car when they don't pay a meter, like, meter's broken, and they just put that on their car and fucking still park there? Mm. Those dudes bust some loads, bro. <laughs> I think there's other things too. Like pickpockets? Oh, people that wear turtlenecks do not come very much or far. No? What is it about wanting to keep your neck warm? It's not very manly. It's just a bitch move. (laughs) It's just the most French thing too. Uh, And I don't care about the French, dude. Humans? Yeah, just people that are just (laughs) smoking their own dicks out there who have no real light. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I've met some people who, yeah, they're breathing, but that's it, really. Yeah, this you idea know. that we're all created equals. You've never met anybody that's a genius, if you say that. I've met some people that I'm like, I talk to them, I go, oh, I'm like a monkey. Yeah. Compared to you. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Dude, I talked to your buddy Eddie Bravo, and that guy is a real. He's out there. He's like a Jack, he's like a deaf, like a deaf Jack Russell almost, you know? A deaf Jack Russell? Yeah, because once he gets going, you can't. Oh, Jack Russell Terrier? Yeah. You ever been around one of those dogs? You open the car, and then the next thing you know, they're at the. Yeah. They're like sick, yeah. Well, well how's he deaf? Because you can't get him back. Like, once he goes, you can't. You know what I'm saying? You can't get him back in the car. Like, you're sitting there honking the horn. You can't. That guy's out there. You know my home. You know what I'm talking about? I do know what you're talking about. But I've never heard anybody make a, a, a description like that. A oh. deaf Jack Russell Terrier. That is hilarious. He's extravagant, dude. Yeah. Do you think you see yourself ever going to church again? Yeah, I would think so. I yeah. think church is kind of evolving over our time and stuff like that. And... Um, Would you go to Justin Bieber's preacher? Carl Lentz. You know who he is? Yeah. Wow. He texted me, actually. Whoa. He's trying to groom you. Trying to pull you in. How is he a dark wear, arts? How low, low do you wear your shorts? Huh? <laughs> oh, I saw you guys making fun of his root. 
Dick Groot. Yeah, that was a little wild, huh? So you know him? So you know uh, I've never guy? met him. No, you just text each other back and forth. Yeah, we communicate sometimes. Yeah, hashtag, that's that root. Hashtag Dick Root. And he, uh, that's good. Yeah, they're both pretty camo too. I think. He's got camo but they, shorts. Um, camo shorts. But I've never met him. But uh, I would go you just to text each other. Yeah. Does he try to meet you? And you're like, not tonight, bro. No. <laughs> <laughs> you think he's homoerotic? No. Oh. No. I mean, I, that's I, a weird way of putting it. Oh. Uh, <laughs> I, <mean, laughs> I think you're homoerotic. What? <laughs> bro, you're homo way gayer than me, bro. <laughs> <laughs> you always, every time I'm here, you talk about jerking off the magical Is hat the we problem? almost wore. <laughs> What about Is that, that? The problem is like you came in here with like gay expectations. No, I got <laughs> nothing, dude. Well, you know bees are dying too. Yeah. Bees are dying from the heat. Is it the heat? Yep. They're evaporating. They ejaculate, and their whole body blows up. Is that real? Bring it up, Jamie. <laughs> I'm gonna fucking do I, something in here today. I'm good. At temperatures over 107 degrees Fahrenheit, it is estimated that half of male honeybees will die in this manner within six hours. So with that's more that's sensitive individuals dying after only two or three hours. The headline is the man. Oh, bees ejaculating themselves to death in heat waves. Fuck yeah, baby. Oh my Spring god, break, you're telling the baby. Truth? I thought you were just making break. shit up. <laughs> <laughs> Click on that. <laughs> Hell no, dude. This is in, uh, I'm sure. <laughs> this is in, uh, Panama City Beach, Florida. Beach, <laughs> beach, click on that link. What happened? This is Kid Rocks, honey. That's who's making this. Shit. <laughs> that is for sure if it's got steam in it. Be dude, we had this pedophile dude in our town, right? Big Richard. You don't say. He used to bait us all with autographed Shaquille O'Neal stuff to come <laughs> yeah. and spend How time. did he get that? How did he get that? Was it, were they fake? I don't know if they were fake. We were, you know, we'd never seen anything signed by Shaq. We were so excited. And obviously, they were fake. Well, it could have been a conspiracy, like he was working directly with the Orlando Magic. At the time. Shut up! Shut I mean, you never up. know. Shut up. Big Richard, dude, and I remember. What are you, about? He, you said he baited you. What did you do with this bait? He would like show. You know, we used to go by his house and get stoned. He was a substitute teacher, right? And he was also 78 years old. Was like, there any real teachers? Way too old. This? <laughs> <laughs> Is there any real, like, were they all just like part-time teachers? Part-time should be in jail. Like, what the fuck is happening? Oh, I'm gonna do my uh, Andrew Holmes impersonation. <laughs> No, man, I'll tell you, bro, there's that a lot of perv. Dude, it's the bottom of the, where the Mississippi ends, man. It's where that, it's very silty, alluvial soil down there, man. Teacher, so Big Richard, bro, he invited us over, right? So I go over there and smoke. One, he invited me to my girlfriend, or we met him at church, right? So I was like, oh, this is Big Richard who teaches us science sometimes, right? And my girlfriend's like, well, she couldn't turn her neck that good, actually, I don't remember. But she had, I think, early, uh... What's it called when you get like stiffness in your back? Like your arthritis. Yeah. Early onset arthritis. Childhood EOA, arthritis. EOA. Or something. Yeah. Wow. She would always do like that. Yeah. You know? yeah. Oh, you made like Thriller, Michael Jackson. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. So me and her though went over to Big Richards, bro. So next next time next time he said, "Well, we want you to just come next time and watch it watch a football." I said, "Okay, Big Richard, I'll come over." So I go over there. It was, it breaks out some weed, right? I'm like, I smoke weed. You know, I'm a child. I'm <laughs> so next thing you know, we're puffing out. You know, getting gassed out with this big yard, baby. And uh, he told me, bring your buddies over. Bring your buddies. So now me and all my buddies are over there. And then he took us to a Marilyn Manson concert, bro. Like he got somehow he knew somebody or whatever. He gets us. We're 16 years old. We're at Marilyn Manson. Like uh, we're fucking living. Yeah. I mean, yeah. So one time we're over there eating steaks at his house, and my buddy Scotty is in the other room, and um, I went in the kitchen to get something. And and it, Scotty yelled at me. He goes, "Hey man, can you get me some sour cream? Because I had a baked potato come with a side eye." Sure. He goes, "Hey, can you get me a uh, some sour cream?" And I said, "No, but you can have some of this sweet cream." I was joking. Yeah. Thanks so for then, clarifying that. By the way. <laughs> So Big Richard's in the other room, bro, and I hear him go, can I have some? <laughs> and that's when all of our brains were just like, oh, oh no, Bro, no. you could feel all oh, fucking no. four of us that were over there. It all started yes. to connect. Oh, my God. We were like, what are we doing? <laughs> we are high. So then it you became like. You were on a like, date, by the way. If you went to that and then afterwards at steak, you were on a date. 
<laughs> we didn't think of it, man. That's oh how pedophiles God. get you, man, because you don't think it's a, a thing. You don't think it's a date. I think it's just <laughs> eating steak at it with a man. When did he bring the shack cards out? So then after that, it started getting like, I'll, you know, I'll take one of y'all to Vegas if you want to go. Just big offers, you know. And I mean, we're a small town, so it's like, dude, you want to go to Vegas? We never even, you know, we've seen maybe a drawing of Vegas or somebody screaming or somebody, you know, yelling at while they're beating their wife or whatever, you know. But we've never been a lot of Vegas, so everybody, you know. A buddy of mine took a trip with him out there. The Somebody told me Black Guys Come has music in it. Have you heard that? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Jazz. Somebody told it's like me jazz, that. blues kind of a thing, yeah. It's like um, Thelonious Monk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah that's yeah, what it dude. is, yeah. It's got a little Leon bridge yeah. in the and back. And it's thicker, too. I've tasted it. It's thicker. <laughs> but, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's a thick, good, good stuff. Well, I, well, it was a fat black guy, so maybe that's fat black guys have thicker comb. Oh, I'm sure they yeah, do, yeah, dude. Yeah, Even yeah. just by looking at them, you know they're not. Yeah, yeah. It's got diabetes in it for sure. Well, they're not. They're definitely throwing a creme, you uh, know, yeah, 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 creme brulee. You know, <laughs> yeah. I got that kind of. I got a good upper medium dick, man. Yeah, yeah. I got uh, upper medium is. The I got that candy corn. I should build like a candy corn. Pull up a candy corn, Zach. Bro, I'm gonna get you up on game, oh, so baby. It's start, it's start big, go down tomorrow. No, no, no. It's, it's the opposite. That's exactly how it's shaped, just like that candy corn. Come on, get me a candy corn, man. Yeah, yeah click that one. Damn. Okay. Like that, baby. Right, yeah. All right. So. Like my shit shaped like the piece that lands back on Earth after the shuttle goes up. You know what I'm saying, bro? Does that work out good though? Like, because you know some girls, know, bro. you know some girls enjoy different different cocks, man. You know that's a, that's a whole thing. You know? yeah. yeah. Well, at least the good thing about I think, well, one one so, bet. That that's a choke. You know, it's a choke. No, my shit, but it, my mine is a, is it's there's some there's a second story to it. My yeah. shit ain't no. Okay, I got a choke. Dude, I heard you and that guy. They were, they were talking about y'all were talking about horse sex and and the uh, <laughs> when I pulled up in the lobby, I was like, oh, okay, this is my kind of place today. Dude, I saw in New Orleans one time they had uh, a lot of the cops in the French Quarter on horseback. Yeah. And two of the horses started fucking with the <laughs> really? with the cops on them, bro. <laughs> Were the cops getting mad? Uh, one of them was. <laughs> was the other one excited? The one in the back, I think, was kind of fucking vibing with it a little, because at least he was in the winning position, you know? Right. You don't want to be the guy where the horse gets done fucking that horse, and then he starts fucking you. And okay. we ate a bunch of shrooms out there and kind of commandeered this water table. There was a water table that had kind of been left un uh, unattended. What is a water table? Just a table with a bunch of oh, cups table of water. Oh, on. Okay. So we got over there and people were running, you know, they're going and we started telling people that the water was for Asian people only, right? Bro, we are crying laughing because people are running, they can't stop. They're trying to make a time. So for some people we'd be like, bro, it's Asians only. And it was like, why are you doing this? <laughs> and then Asian people were all excited, you know, and we kept passing them up. <laughs> Dude, we were fucking. Uh, I would take pictures with like uh, people, and I'd have my fucking nuts hanging out the whole time. It what? Was, yeah, bro, we were out. Took pictures of people with <laughs> your nuts. On. How old were you at the time? I don't know, man. Probably 28. <laughs> and people were like, "Hey, let's get a picture together." So we get it, oh and I just God. slip that bag out there, baby. That fucking gum holster. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We had this one guy. He used to give us maybe four dollars or something. And he'd be to look in his ass, bro, and he'd walk about like 20 feet off and hold his ass open. As long as we look, we got the money. <laughs> so just did, shit did, like did that, he, just bored people. Partner? Did he have know? a who, who made sure you looked? How could, how could he Who made sure? sure you got paid? That's what I want to know. He gave the money first. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. Because yeah. that would be a shitty deal. At a certain point, you were you were kind of grandfathered in. If he knew you were going to look, you kind of got the money up front. You were grandfathered in. <laughs> We had this brother at our school, bro, when we were in, uh, I don't know what it was, fifth grade. This dude, Mr. Larry, right? He was, ended up being a janitor. He would come and pee over you into the fucking <laughs> urinal and hit that bitch every time, bro. Yeah. <laughs> huh? Was he hung or just like good aim? <laughs> he was hung and he just had that hang time on him. He had that fucking, he just hit the three pointer, so. Really? That's yeah. impressive. Wow. Yeah. They're good for that guy. Because you didn't know you'd be peeing, and then all of a sudden you'd see that play. It almost seemed like the Lord came and was helping. He was like, 
this is how it's done, you know? And he fucking splat. He'd be right on your back. He'd go right up your back and come right down. He was like the damn, who was that guy who scaled that mountain or whatever? You know what I'm talking about? Solo. 100%. Oh, dude, I'll tell you this. So, somebody got a CD radio boss, you know? So, this one lady that used to do substitute teaching, right? Her son was had like a, his mouth was always real slippery. He had like a, kind of a salivary disorder. I wouldn't say disorder. <laughs> but he had like a, he was missing a gasket on the end. I would say that. Just leaking. <laughs> Yeah, definitely, yeah. Like, you wouldn't fucking, if he leaned his head to one side, dude, you're going to have to dry him up, you know? So this fella one time named Michael was his name. And he, uh, so anyway, his mom would hook up with his boy, Clint. Like, Clint, but with an N in it. Was it how he said his name. When people were like, Clint, like, Clint, with an N in it. They're like, that's, that's a way to do it. Anyway, so his mom would make us stay out in his car when they, she would come over and they would hook up in the, in the house so he had a cb radio right so he was 16 he's in there hooking up with the with the teacher uh we'd be on the cb on the ham radio just you know you know <laughs> you know pigeon the fucking you know hospital or whatever you yeah. know and uh and so some dude comes off the interstate right one day in a semi truck into our neighborhood this guy ended up being a pedophile we didn't know me and fucking slip fucking lip michael <laughs> <laughs> We're in his truck. He fucking making us eat Tootsie Roll inside of his truck, right? The guy who is getting, who's inside with Michael's mom, comes out, sees what's going on, and beats the shit out of the dude, man. Oh, oh my God. God. Wait, the, the dude is feeding you candy? Tootsie yeah. Rolls. Doing how much Tootsie Rolls we could put in our mouth. And we didn't know. You was ate, it like a you test? Ate, you ate candy. I didn't. I mean, I had uh, probably four in my mouth. I had a small mouth. Oh no! The, how many was in his <laughs> mouth? <laughs> <laughs> I have a small mouth, but I have always had a small throat, so I'm afraid to have a lot in my mouth. Ever. Dude, I remember when I was young, the first fella I even ever masturbated to was a buddy who had big tits like that. <laughs> hey, you smelled the cologne I had on when I came in? Um, I don't know. You guys smelled good. Yeah. I feel like you're so full of shit. Really? Yeah. Nuh-uh. You guys smelled good, man. For real? Yeah, What do we dude. smell like when we walk in? Honestly, I usually think it's de- like a lot of deodorant. Wow. <laughs> Bro, my yeah, no. Black people do wear a lot of deodorant. Love though. deodorant, yeah, bro. You'll we, see somebody start at the love, wrist. Yeah, we have for You'll deodorant. see a motherfucker start at the wrist, bro. And put that shit on. Somebody put that shit on so slow, like damn.